Good morning, everybody. Fred is here. Common misconception is here. Common misconception. When I, when I saw you put a comment up, I thought, oh my god, common misconception's here. Common misconception's not normally here on a Tuesday. It's not a Tuesday, is it? It's a Saturday. That's why you're here. And I was literally going to open the stream with, common misconception, you're not normally here on a Tuesday. That was going to be my opening line. And then I was like, not a Tuesday, Magpie. It's a Saturday. Anyway, <laughs> on that note, welcome back to Dragon Age Awakening. Uh, Fred has got coffee and reheated leftover pizza. I've got half a box of chocolates left over from my birthday. Yeah, it, yes, I got them on my birthday and I still have some left. That is quite exceptional for me. So I've got Thornton's Classic, The Tastes of the Nation, proudly crafted in the UK, established 1911. Very posh. Posh chocolates. Yeah. And uh, should we see what's in my box of chocolates? So there is... I've made sure that there is at least one of each type left. Um, I always like to do that. I don't like to, you know, eat them all. You know what I mean? Like eat all of one type in one go. I don't like to do that. So we've got gooey caramel, soft buttery cam caramel wrapped in a deliciously smooth milk chocolate cup. We've got one of them. There was three. Now there's one. We've got creamy fudge. Silky smooth fudge with a sprinkle of sea salt smothered in milk chocolate and finished with a chocolate drizzle. I think there's one of them as well. Yeah, there was there was three of them and now there's one. Um, we've also got heavenly honeycomb, a divine honeycomb truffle with honeycomb and hazelnut pieces coated in milk chocolate and drizzled with dark chocolate swirls. Uh, there's one of them. There was two. <laughs> uh, there's fudge brownie, a rich brownie truffle combined with a layer of soft fudge. Finished with a dusting of milk chocolate. I haven't eaten either of those two yet. So uh, there's two of them. They always put in like three of the boring ones and then only two of like the best ones, don't they? So I've left both of those. I haven't eaten any of those yet. Then we've got tempting toffee. Melt in your mouth toffee flavour centre with, with delicious toffee pieces in a crisp milk chocolate shell. I think I've eaten one of them and there's one left. Uh, and then my favourite one personally, which I am saving till the last. I haven't eaten either of them yet. Crunchy praline, hazelnut and crispy wafer combine, a uh, combine in a creamy white chocolate. <laughs> shall I start that again? Shall I? <laughs> I messed the advert up, guys. Take two. Uh, <laughs> hazelnut and crispy wafer combine in creamy white chocolate sprinkled with roasted almonds. There we go. That's what I'm going to be indulging in while I'm, uh, uh, yeah. While well, I'm playing, mm -hmm. um, hang on, I need to find a space to put it down on my desk. Uh, you would think that this video was like sponsored by Thornton's or something, wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, if I ever were to get sponsored by anybody, I think it would have to be some kind of chocolate company, wouldn't it? <laughs> Can you imagine, like Magpie sponsored by Cadbury's? Coronation Street used to be sponsored by Cadbury's, I remember, when I was a, a little child. Watching Coronation Street was always sponsored by Cadbury's. Um, I don't know where to put me things. There isn't enough room on my desk because I've got too much crap. The worst thing is, I bloody tidied it up yesterday and I've still got too much crap on it. Uh, there you go, you can go down there. Right, okay. So. Um, um, don't let the kitties have any, don't worry. Uh, they don't show much interest in chocolate or anything like that. They're, uh, they've always been very good at leaving my food alone. They only kind of bother with their food. Like when I'm cooking and stuff, they never... They're never that bothered. Unless I'm having fish. That's the only time that I have to be, because they love fish. That's the only time that I have to be sort of, you know, vigilant. Although, you know, it doesn't matter if they eat fish, because they can eat fish. But I mean, like, you know, I don't want them eating my fish, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, they're, they're pretty good at leaving my food alone. They're not, uh, they're, they're, uh, I mean, Scorpio did eat a um, Jacob's mini cheddar once. Which probably wasn't very good for him, because I imagine it was quite salty. But I think that's about the only thing... <laughs> That either of them's ever eaten it, they probably shouldn't have done. Also, they have, they weirdly really like melon, but they can eat melon. It's fine for them to eat melon, but like, if I'm cutting up melon, they've like, they, they really, they, yeah, they really want the melon, and that's kind of quite annoying. But it's the only things that they go for are melon and fish. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Welsh friend is here. Hello, Welsh friend. Um, oh, Welsh friend, man, you missed me giving the rundown of the, my box of chocolates. I've got a box of chocolates ne next to me. And I was I was given detailed descriptions of each type of chocolate. You missed it. 
Honestly, this is why you have to be here on time, woman. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so are you ready? Uh, are you ready to see the game? Fred put a little comment up on my uh, on the post that I had. Yes, yes, yesterday's post wasn't it? Announcing the live stream today. Yes, Fred put a little comment up asking a, a, a very important question. Well, his very important question is about to be answered. Yeah. <laughs> We might, we're gonna gonna make it a tradition that every awakening part has to start with Dora in her knickers. Yeah, so <laughs> that's the thing. Um, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Dora's in her knickers. Uh, should we just walk around Amaranthian in our knickers for a little bit? Do you know what? I was looking at her before we started the video. Uh, but that one, so they'll follow me. <laughs> they were hanging back there because they, you know, they were too embarrassed to be seen with me. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah. Do you not think that the dwarves actually have like the most realistic body type of all the people in Origins? Because like, if we if we if we take Anders out of his robes, he's just gonna be like, yeah, look at that. Nobody looks like that except like Hollywood actors. Nobody in real life looks like that. Like nobody who you're actually gonna meet looks like that. But you know what? If somebody took their clothes off and looked like that. I wouldn't bat an eyelash. An eyelid. Yeah, eyelash. Eyelid? Eyelash. Whatever. <laughs> because, like, you know, that, I think that that is a much more realistic body type than that. <laughs> what does Ogren look like without his clothes on? It's not a question that I've ever wanted answered before, but there we go. Uh, you see, he's, he's a bit too muscly to be realistic, isn't he? But still, just the fact that he looks kind of weird and out of proportion, like most people do, you know. <laughs> Um, which armor is his again? Uh, I really want him with his armor back on. <laughs> armor of the Legion. There we go. There we go. Uh, right. So, should we put Dora's armor back on as well? We'll put her armor back on because I'm nice like that. Right. We are going to be going. Um. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. Read the chat. Right. Yes. We are going to be going to the Wending Wood. However, something that I noticed last time is that the game has inexplicably taken all of my enchantments off my hoojits. So, I want to... How many enchantments have we actually got? I don't think we've got many. Uh, oh, blame it. Right, we've got Grandmaster Flame, Novice Flame, Expert Call. I want my uh, Paralyzed ones back. And those are like resistancy ones. Oh, plus two constitution. Stout! Stout rune. That would be good for Dora, wouldn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah, I want my paralyzed runes back. Cause I might, I might try and enchant all of me uh, things before I, uh, before we head to the Wending Wood. Um, oh, he's got some pure iron. I think uh, somebody needs that at some point. Um, we've got rune tracings to like make our own runes. But I want, whoops, I want like, uh, I want, uh, uh, um, uh, sorry, I distracted myself there. <laughs> I didn't realise you could right click on stuff that the merchant sold. And I thought, I was like, I wonder if you've got the destroy option <laughs> on the merchant stuff like you have on your own stuff. I thought that would be quite funny. <laughs> I could destroy things that the merchant sold. Um, what was I saying? I was saying something. I can't remember. Yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to buy runes. Because I haven't infest in in infested. Oh my god, I can't talk today. I haven't infested <laughs> in rune crafting yet. I haven't invested in rune crafting yet. It's going to be another one of those live streams, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, you're a grocer. You probably don't sell. Uh, you probably don't sell. Oh, actually, you do sell tracings. You know, just sell runes. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um read the chat to see if anybody uh, <laughs> um okay uh, sorry I was just seeing if anybody had anything useful to say like telling me where I can buy runes but no you're just talking about <laughs> fictional magpie mugs <laughs> Um, yeah, what are you 
can sell. Do you sell anything? Ooh, health pulses. I'll take some health pulses. It's not what I'm here for, but you know. I'll take them anyway. Like when you go in for milk and you come out with like, you know, blue hair dryer or something like that. Um, <laughs> uh, the rain potions would probably be useful as well, wouldn't they? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to run out of money soon. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. <laughs> okay, so. Should we just kind of go with the runes that we've got? We'll head back to. Yes, that place. Mm hmm. That place from whence we came. Yes. Mm hmm You know, the big place. Vigil's Keep, that's it. Uh, we'll go back to there. See if any of the merchants have runes that we can buy. And if not, we'll just, you know, make do with what we've got. We'll get some stuff enchanted. And then we shall head to the Wending Wood. Because we need Valana. Because I need another mage. Uh... Yeah, I need like a damage dealer because Anders is like my, you know, my healing mage and I need like a damage dealer mage. Over here, I'm going to eat a chocolate. Which chocolate should I eat? Uh, oh no, I've dropped me little thing that has all of me descriptions of me chocolates on it. Hang on, hang on. This is an emergency. Uh, 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 uh. I got it, I got it, I got it. It went down, it went down the back of the, uh, the back of the desk. Right. Oh my God, it's got a QR code on it. Scan me to discover our exclusive range, including personalised chocolate gifts at thorntons.com. I once got my dad a personalised Cadbury's bar. Bar of Cadbury's chocolate with his picture on. And his... I can't remember what I had written on it. I had something written on it. I think it was for Father's Day. Um, there you go. And you can get personalised M&Ms where they put, like, little pictures on it. Uh, like, you know, you can put a picture or you can put, like, a message on them. And when I've seen, like, photos of them, I always think it just looks like... Is it ecstasy? Where, where they have the... There's some drug where they put little pictures on the pills. And that's just what I think it looks like, honestly. Uh, anyway. <laughs> oh my god, we've gone off on, like, 15 tangents already. We haven't even done that yet. Right, which, which chocolate do I want? I think... Hmm... I'm saving the fudge brownie and the crunchy praline. I'm not touching either of them till last. Should we go heavenly honeycomb? We'll go heavenly honeycomb. There we go. Oh, just, you know, because you missed it, Welsh friend. Heavenly honeycomb is <clears throat> a divine honeycomb truffle with honeycomb and hazelnut pieces coated in milk chocolate and drizzled with dark chocolate swirls. There we go. All right. So, where are we going? Mm, we just keep... <laughs> mm. What are you lot talking about in the trap? Oh, bugs. Oh my goodness. Do you not like Turkish Delight, Welsh friend? I quite like a bit of Turkish Delight. <coughs> <coughs> oh dear, I'm choking on my chocolate. Cadbury's used to do a Turkish Delight bar that was really good and they've stopped doing it. Now you can only get the fries one. The trouble with the fries is I think there's like too much Turkish Delight. The Turkish Delight chocolate ratio is off. I like a, a, a sort of... A good amount of chocolate with me Turkish delight. I don't like I don't like just Turkish delight on its own, do you know what I mean? I mean I do like it, like I would eat it, but like I prefer it with chocolate on. And does it still in his knickers, I've just noticed. I uh, I put Ogre and Adora back in their clothes and I left Anders in his knickers <laughs> while I was busy talking about chocolate. Okay, so um <laughs> uh, okay, so I think Turkish delight to Welsh friend is what olives are to me, I think. <laughs> um, right, okay. Does anybody sell... Um, you don't sell um, you runes, do you? I think he just sells armour. Oh, yes, I found an ore deposit. <laughs> this will help a great deal. Viridium. Armour and weapons could be made with this. Commander, if you like, we could outfit your men. 
It wouldn't cost you anything, but some soldiers would have to guard the miners. Okay. Where did I find Viridium? I have absolutely no idea where I found Viridium, but apparently I did. Okay. Um, yes, you'll have your guards, my men. You better gear. So I'm to make armor for all Amaranthine's rabble? Helen, you abuse me so. It's unconscionable. Commander's orders. Fine, fine, I'll work. But I want a challenge one day. Something to sink my teeth into. Okay, uh, I actually wanted to buy stuff off you. You're back. Um, you need anything? Yeah. Oh. It must have been down like in the uh, the undergroundy bit that I found the Viridium, I don't know. I don't know, I don't pay that much attention when I'm uh, live streaming, I'll be honest. <laughs> I know I should, but I don't. Um, <laughs> uh, Dworkin doesn't want to talk to us yet, does he? Uh, okay. So what would you do if you didn't have to be a Grey Warden? Wow, okay, Jesus. I was actually just coming in here to buy some runes, but all right. Um, strange question to ask out of the blue. Don't have to do anything. Once you're a woman, there's no going back. I'd leave this plane to do elsewhere. Yeah, strange question out of the blue. Is it? You've never thought about it. Does nobody ever leave the wardens? Um. Hmm, you can leave, but you'll be tainted forever. You can run, but you can't hide. I think I've heard that before. I've never liked the idea of being trapped somewhere, to be honest. It reminds me of the circle. After my seventh escape attempt, you'd think they'd have given me credit for trying. You know, common misconception is far too comfortable just mentioning the vegetable that must not be named in every stream. I swear, it's every stream. You're, you're, you're pushing your luck, love. <laughs> if I ever work out how to ban people... <laughs> I wouldn't ban you because I don't have enough people to be able to go around banning people. <laughs> um, yeah, apparently I can like ban people from the chat, but I don't know how to do it. Not that I've ever wanted to do it, but, you know, if we ever got like an arsehole or something who I wanted to ban from the chat, you know, it would be a useful thing to know, wouldn't it? Anyway, um, uh, seven escape attempts. How is it that they didn't just execute you? Are you thinking of escaping here too? Yes, yeah, seven escape attempts. I got really good at escaping the tower. Just never good at staying escaped. Until now, I suppose. The only thing I ever missed about the circle was that cat, to be honest. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, now you have a new one. So I do. How are you doing in there, Sir Bouncer Lord? <laughs> You'll be a fine mouser yet. Can cats be Grey Wardens? Hmm. I know dogs can be Grey Wardens because there's a dog Grey Warden in... Uh, what's it called? The Calling, the book, with with um, young Duncan in it, and young Loghain and Marek, and they go into the deep roads with a group of Grey Wardens, and one of them has a Mabari who, I think, accidentally drank some dog's one blood and is, uh, is actually a Grey Warden. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, so... What am I doing? I'm trying to find runes, aren't I? I think the mage over there sells runes, but I'll try this guy first. <clears throat> Welsh friend. <laughs> you just told us that as soon as you're famous, we're toast. I don't think you need to worry anytime soon, Welsh friend, all right? <laughs> I think you've got too much to worry about in that department. <laughs> With me 320 something subscribers. <laughs> right, uh, yeah, let me see what you have. Um, uh, yeah, he's got tracings, but he doesn't have actual runes. I sometimes wish that they didn't put rune crafting in Awakening, you know, because it just means you can't get runes anywhere. <laughs> and although it is kind of cool to be able to craft your own at the same time, you sort of think, what was the point? Uh, you're Nathaniel, you're not a mage. There we go, it's you I want. May I be of service? Uh, yeah, do you have any words of sale? Uh, she's got lyrian potions. She's got tracings. Ah ha 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 ha! Has she only got novice ones. Oh fuck off, man! I don't want novice ones. <sighs> right. Okay. Um. She doesn't even have any tracings that I really want, to be honest. I want my grandmaster paralyzed back. It's not fair, guys. It's not fair. Okay, I'll take Novice Paralyze them. 
Should we have s uh, seven? No, I think that was seven. Um, yeah, and that'll do us for now, and then we'll help her in shots and stuff. Abbey of service. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Magpie's already leaving us behind. I'm not, Fred! <laughs> of course. <laughs> um. Okay. Oh, I've still got my runes on my... Hang on, what? I've still got my runes on Bloodline. I've still got my runes on there. It's just that, yeah, it's just me. Huh. I thought it had taken them off me weapons. Clearly I was mistaken. Which means I didn't need to buy those paralyzer runes. Although I can put them on that and then you can have a Grandmaster Flame Room. Old Ogran. <clears throat> okay. Um immunity barrier. Const I'm having the constitution. Chance to avoid missile attacks. Eh, we'll go with that, why not? And we'll go with the immunity. And then Nathaniel can help with that. <clears throat> God, my voice is giving out on me. Jesus. Oh. Um. <laughs> uh. I've got 334 more followers than Fred. Have I got 334 now? Have I? I thought I was still like in the 320s. Um. I don't look that often, I'll be honest, right? I'm gonna have another chocolate. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have. Yeah, I'm gonna have creamy fudge. Cause I'm not the biggest fan of fudge. So we'll get that out of the way. I mean, I quite like fudge, but it's not like my favorite. Can, you can't eat a lot of it, can you, fudge? So this is silky smooth fudge with a sprinkle of sea salt smothered in milk chocolate and finished with a chocolate drizzle. Mm-hmm. Oh. As fudge goes, that's actually all right. Pretty decent. It's not too sickly. I'm just reading the chart, don't mind me. Mm. Right, okay, so. Uh, what are we doing? Wending wood. That's what we're doing. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm distracting myself with chocolate. That's what I'm doing. Which, you know, is nothing new. I can hear a cat behind me. Fudge eating ASMR. <laughs> Did it sound really awful? I'm always paranoid when I'm eating. <laughs> um, yeah. You were staring at me, you mad skirt wearing freak. Oh, I thought you were being attacked by a wild animal. It was only your beard. You think you're so clever, don't you? Sparkle fingers. Mm-hmm. Um... Does this chest keep refilling itself? I'm sure that's like the fourth time I've uh, opened that chest. I've definitely opened this chest before. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I've definitely looted that wooden crate as well. It's a thing I definitely remember doing. Right. So. Oh, that's quite a nice view of the castle, isn't it? We'll have to do an album cover here at some point. We should do a naked album cover. Oh my god. <laughs> If we're gonna we're, if we're gonna make Dora be naked like, you know, a theme. <laughs> um. Uh. Oh God, what's Fred telling me? Problem on the horizon. Recruiting Valana is a big hit to Ogren's friendship. Better to leave the forest and recruit him. Just before final top blah 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 blah. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I need Valana, Fred. I really do. And uh, you know what? If Ogren doesn't like me enough to tell me about his terrible stint of fatherhood, then we'll just deal with it. Uh, yeah. Do you think 
think anybody has ever made that noise when running into battle. Do you think that's ever been a thing? People just like growl when they're running into battle. I think this caravan was attacked. And as thinks the caravan was attacked. Uh huh. There is blood. There is a ruined caravan. We can look at. Uh, this caravan was smashed to bits. Simple bandits. Something. 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 Mm hmm. Would not have done this much damage. Um. <laughs> Uh, uh, what's my favourite part of Awakening? Mine's definitely the Black Marsh. Yeah, so is mine. I love the Black Marsh. Black Marsh, actually, that's probably my best part of, like, my favourite part of, like, all of Origins. Um, uh, it's just, it's so thematic, isn't it? Uh, what are we doing? Dexterity, cunning. I'm going to stop putting more in cunning, actually, than dexterity. Shaking things up a bit in Awakening. Because, you know, we've got so much dexterity now, we don't really need lots more. Uh, what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? Feast of the Fallen. The assassin thrives on the moment of death. Stamina is partially restored whenever the assassin fills an opponent with a backstab. Yeah, stamina isn't really a big issue, I don't think. Heartseeker. Uh, the rogue strikes with great precision, attempting to fill weakened enemies in one last blow. The attack is successful. A target of elite rank or lower is killed instantly. If its health is already low enough, the attack does not... No, if, if its health is already low enough, if the attack does not kill, it inflicts a critical hit instead. That sounds good, doesn't it? We'll have that. Right, so... Uh, okay. chests on the other side that I can't get to. <gasps> I'll have to go through the enemies, guys. Hello, enemies. Yeah, you want to attack me? Okay. Oh, blind maybe sounds a bit loud. Jesus. Okay. I know the sound might be alright for you, but I'm going to turn it down a little bit so that I can actually hear what I'm saying. Um, but if it's too quiet, do let me know. <coughs> oh, God. Right, so... Anders doesn't have fireball, does he? That's a shame, because those guys are begging for a flipping fireball. Do we have any bombs we can use? Uh, we've only really got acid flasks and one freeze bomb. The acid flasks aren't that great, to be fair. We'll chuck one in anyway, though. We'll chuck one at him. Uh, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then. If we all go after the leader... Uh, I keep looking for Morrigan, and of course she's not there, is she? Oh man, I had Morrigan and Dora like perfectly specked out to complement each other and now Morrigan's not there. I feel like I've lost an arm or something. Uh, right, we've got the leader down. Anders, can you heal Ogryn, my dear? And... Actually, can Ogryn also take a health bonus? Because like, he's more than a little bit dead. Oh my god, we've got over 99 lesser health bonuses. We've also got over 99 greater health bonuses. Like... We're doing our reach on the old health policies. Uh, and you can have your potent and your superb. Sounds like something Mary Poppins would craft, doesn't it? A superb health policy. Uh, and you can take a take a normal one. That should hopefully heal you up. Um, can't always tell once you get later on and they've all got loads of uh, uh, health and whatnot. Uh, sometimes, you know, health policies don't actually do that much anymore. Go. Uh, my Morrigan is in another game, that's true. Oh, do you know what I've done the last couple of nights? I've been, uh, um, sorry, I've been planning my all eight world states. So I don't have any of my hawks yet because, I don't know, I just think that in Dragon Age 2, as much as it's my favourite of all the games, like, you don't make as many important decisions, you know what I mean? Like, important to the world. Because you're only in Kirkwall, and all of your decisions kind of relate to Kirkwall. And then at the end of the game, like, the final decision, where you're sort of choosing between the Majors of the, and the Templars, but then whichever one you choose, everything ends up the same anyway, so it doesn't really feel like it's that important. So, like... So I haven't planned my Hawks yet. I've just planned my Wardens and my Inquisitors and the sort of the major choices that they're going to make. Not the smaller ones, but the major ones like, you know, 
who's going to end up running the world. Because <laughs> in uh, Origins, you choose who ends up running for Elden, and then in Inquisition, you choose who runs or lay, and then who becomes divine. So, you know, you basically are, you basically do choose who rules the world. Um, so yeah, and then like whether uh, Kieran is there or not, and just stuff like that, you know. So I've I've planned out everybody's like major decisions, and then I've paired them up with each other. So I know which Inquisitor is going to follow on from which Warden, and then like what the ultimate world will be like, like, you know, who's going to be running the world in each world state. And I've given each one a kind of theme. And then from that theme, we'll be able to kind of d- deduce what kind of hawk we're going to play as. That's sort of my general kind of thing. Um, I can't remember why I started talking about this. There was probably a reason. But uh, 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 the point is, it's, I've got it all planned now and it's very exciting. And oh my god, I've got I've got it on like post-it notes stuck on my wall and everything with like lines drawn between them and stuff like that. It's very technical. It, look, you walk into my uh, my little geek room where I currently am and it looks like I'm like solving a murder or something like that because I've just got my notes all put up on the wall. <laughs> it's very cool. Anyway, uh, yeah, so. So I, I'm kind of thinking that we can... Uh, we can sort of play our hawks by ear because each world state has a has a sort of theme. So, like for example, one of them is is sort of massively improves the lot of the elves, whereas another one is sort of like um, I don't know. There's a lot of kind of demons get released. It's all like dark magic and stuff like that. There's also like, you know a lot of blood magic going on and things like that. And then there's another one where the theme is just really happy love stories. Like, like each one of the heroes is just going to have a really happy love story. And, you know, just stuff like that. So, like, from the theme, we can kind of deduce what kind of hawk we want. But we'll just play it by ear. We'll just, like... So when we get to Dragon Age 2, it'll be like, well, this is the theme. What kind of hawk are we going to create? And what sort of choices are we going to make? You know? And then when we get to Inquisition, it's going to be a bit more scripted. Because I've got all of the choices planned out. Anyway, um, I digress. <laughs> get on with this battle, shall we? Um, uh... Yeah, so... Sorry, I'm, re- I'm trying to read the chat at the same time, and we know that that never goes well. So, why am I playing as Ogren? What a strange person for me to be playing as. because <laughs> I'm not paying attention, that's why. Uh... Uh, Dragon Age 2 broke your, broke your daughter's heart. Yes, broke my heart as well. It is, it's a... It's an emotionally draining game Dragon Age 2. I think that's why it's my favourite of the three. And I always say, I don't think it's, like, the best game of the three. I think the Origins is the best game. But Dragon Age 2 is my favourite. Dragon Age 2 is the one that will rip you in half and just tear your soul out from your body and change you as a human being. That's what Dragon Age 2 will do to you. Um, yeah, I love Dragon Age 2. And I don't love, like, the, com- the, the things that people whinge about. Like, oh, all of the caves look the same, and oh, you're only in one city, and you don't get to move around like you do in Origins and stuff. Like, all of that stuff just kind of doesn't matter with the story that they were telling. Do you know what I mean? I mean, when you look at all of the amazing good things about Dragon Age 2, the fact that the caves all look the same, like, who the hell cares? I mean, come on. (laughs) You know, get a bit of perspective, man. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm eating. I'm eating a tempting toffee. So, you know. <laughs> Give me a minute. I'm trying to eat it as quietly as possible, but I don't think it's working. Right. Look this chest while I'm eating. Okay, lots of people don't play games for the stories. I know, those are weird people, aren't they? Oh my god, my tea is stone cold. How the fuck did it go cold so quickly? I was like, ten minutes ago it was still warm. 
Oh dear. Right. Um. Yes, yes, I don't understand the people who don't play games for the story. Like, what are you playing it for? Then? <laughs> and I remember when um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey came out, because they tried to make it, like, RPG-ish. Now, I love Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but I've never played any of the other Assassin's Creeds, because they've never really appealed to me, because I don't like just sort of, you know, pure action games, really. But when they said, oh, it's going to be a big open world and it's going to, you know, be RPG style, you're going to have to make choices and stuff like that, I was like, yeah, that sounds like me. That sounds like something I would like, so I got it. And I absolutely loved it. It's the only th game that I have on PlayStation where I've got a platinum trophy. I mean, I literally gave my life to it for <laughs> like a year and a half. It is a massive game. It takes you a long time to uh, to finish it and to like explore it. It's a huge map. I was quite disappointed when Valhalla came out and the map was smaller. Especially since Valhalla was set in Britain and I wanted them to just recreate the entire country, including Scotland and Wales. But they didn't. They just recreated like most of England, but even then not all of it. And I was I was just really disappointed because in or in uh, Origins, uh, not Origins, Odyssey, um, yeah, they just recreated like all of Greece and it was just like amazing and you could just walk around all of Greece. And then they didn't do it in Valhalla and I was really annoyed. Um, uh, I never really finished Valhalla either. I need to go back to it. I got stuck on a boss and never went back. Anyway, um, yes, but because it was like Assassin's Creed and a lot of Assassin's Creed players weren't really RPG players, I was on the subreddit for it and it was amazing how many people couldn't get their head around the fact that you can make different choices and have different outcomes. And they were going, oh, but, 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 like, there has to be a cannon and, like, you can't have, like, one one player doing this and then another player doing this and the game ends differently in two different games because it just like breaks reality somebody actually said that and i was like you're completely missing the concept here you're completely missing the point of what rpgs are <laughs> and honestly and now of course in the next one they're going back to like old assassin's creed aren't they and they're getting rid of all the rpg stuff probably because all of those people are whinged and it's just really annoying because odyssey was really fucking good and what I played of Valhalla was really good as well. But like I say, I got stuck in a boss. But I, it wasn't as good as Odyssey. Um, it might have got as good as Odyssey. But Odyssey has a really good story. It takes a while to get going. There's like one particular turning point. Because I wasn't really that invested in the story. Up until one particular point. Where someone dies. I'll, 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 that's all I'll say. And uh, it, it's very, very emotional. And I wasn't expecting it. Because up until that point, nothing in the game had sort of been that emotional and and it, it just like suddenly <laughs> you want to personally rip out the throat of every single one of the enemies because this yeah it's just yeah it's it's a really good game that that was a game that really like caught hold of my heart and wouldn't let go and i would like to play it as a chill series at some point if we ever finish oblivion um <laughs> speaking of which um i'm going to finish alice off on a Thursday live stream. That's what I'm going to do because otherwise it's not going to get done. I keep planning it, planning to get the rest of Alice recorded and then it just doesn't happen. So I'm going to do it on a Thursday live stream or maybe two, depends how long it takes me. Um, and that's going to be like our test run for the Thursday live streams. And then if that, if it all kind of goes all right and doing three live streams a week isn't too much, we'll finish off Oblivion on Thursday live streams as well. There we go. So, you know, you'll end up having three live streams of me every week. Although don't don't feel obligated to attend all three of them. I realise it is quite a big ask, especially since there'll be about four hours long each. That'll be 12 hours of your week just watching me. I totally understand if that's too much of a commitment. Uh, anyway, there's a tree attacking some bandits. Oh, that was a good stamp. Well done, Mr. Tree. That was that was very nice. And now I'm going to stab you in the arse if I can reach. I don't think I can reach your arse. I might stab you in the ankles. There we go. Um... Oh, security ostrich is here. Daniel's here. Soulmate's here. Oh my goodness, I haven't looked at the chat in ages and everybody's turned up. Everybody turned up while I wasn't looking. <laughs> um, yeah. Now I need to go back and read what everybody's writing. You lot can handle this battle on your own, right? Because I'm really not watching the screen. Um, <laughs> Fred, I hope you're writing down all of these mug slogans that you keep coming up with. <laughs> because when I'm famous, 
and the Magpie merchandise shop opens. <laughs> I'm going to be coming to you going, Fred, what was all those slogans you came up with? <laughs> I'll give you a coat. It'll be fine. <laughs> You'll get commission. <laughs> um... Sorry, I need to read back over everything, otherwise, you know, I, I feel like I'm missing out on stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Soulmate likes that they're going back to a more condensed story. Uh, uh, uh. You see, I mean, I know a lot of people said that the uh, the map in Odyssey was too big. It wasn't for me. I think, I think they did it really well because it never felt empty, which a lot of open worlds do. If you get open worlds wrong, the trouble with open world is it's one of those things. If you get it wrong, it's awful. And if you get it right, it's amazing. But there's no middle ground. I think Odyssey got it right. I think it felt very alive. And I never got bored in Odyssey. But I suppose it depends whether you like the, the uh, game mechanics or not. Because it is a bit grindy. I will admit that. But if you like the game mechanics, you sort of don't notice the grind because you're just enjoying yourself. And I think the people who complained about it being grindy were people who weren't really enjoying the game mechanics. So, you know... Uh, but I never felt like Odyssey was too big. It never felt like too much. Uh, I really loved it. And then when Valhalla was a much smaller map, I was quite disappointed. And also, but Valhalla was a smaller map, but it also felt more empty. Like there was less going on in it. So, I don't know. But like I say, I never got that far into the game. So, you know, it might have picked up a bit. But I always, uh, in Valhalla, I kept running out of things to do. Whereas in Odyssey, I never did. Um, but it never felt like overwhelming either. Um... Uh. Fred's gonna miss Tuesday's live stream. Oh my goodness, Welsh friend, it's gonna be up to you. <laughs> um. Oh, Jedi Knight, Knight Outcast, that takes me back. I don't know if I ever played Outcast, but I watched my brother play it a lot because I used to just sit and watch him play games when I was little. That was my childhood. My childhood was sitting in my brother's room watching him play games. I had a little stool that was my stool and I would sit in his bedroom and watch him play video games. And I used to watch him play Jedi Outcast. I don't know if I ever played it myself. I played Academy. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I need you all to just stop commenting for a second so I can catch up on what you're talking about. There's too many of you, all right? There's too many of you. <laughs> uh, Valhalla was too big, says Soulmate. Well, not for me, it won't. Um... <laughs> um Valhalla was way too many quests. Really? I found the opposite. I was like, I was like, I've, I've, I, I, I don't know. Um. <laughs> um. Uh, right, okay. <laughs> we can get on with the game now. I'm all caught up. I'm caught up on the conversation. I don't feel left out anymore. Right. <laughs> uh, is there a tree attacking me? No, there's a scavenger, but that tree's about to wake up. I knew that tree would wake up. Uh, Nathaniel looks too much like a bandit, and I keep thinking he's a bandit, and he's not. Um, I need to take his stupid hat off, I think, because then he won't look like a bandit anymore. Plus, he's got nice hair. You know, I feel bad for covering up his hair. Um, <clears throat> so... Oh, the, uh, the the trees are immune to magic. I think I knew that. I think I knew that trees are immune to, uh, mag like, basic magic attacks. But I don't think you're immune to my paralyzed spell. I hope you're not immune to my paralyzed spell. 
Yeah, he's not immune to my power. Oh, he got paralyzed with his arse sticking in the air. That's embarrassing. That's in that's so embarrassing, that. I mean, if you have to get paralyzed, you don't want to get paralyzed with your arse sticking in the air, do you? <laughs> it's a good thing there aren't iPhones in uh, Dragon Age World. Otherwise, you know, that would be all over Twitter, that. <laughs> paralyzed tree with his arse in the air. Um. 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 You have a corner cold, ready? Yes, you do. Well done, Anders. You can corner cold all those people. Excellent. And then you can stone fist the bandit, which is not as inappropriate as it sounds. <laughs> oh my god, I saw something hilarious today. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Um, <laughs> it's, it, it's good. It's good. It made me laugh. It was one of those things I had to take a picture and message everybody because it, I just thought it was hilarious. Um, I'm going to let Anders take a, a, a very potion. Uh, and then do a group heal very quickly before you die. And then take a health portless very quickly before you die. Um, who's he been attacked by? He's been attacked by like that bandit, but his health's going down hour quick for just one person. Maybe do a uh, do a mind blast. There we go. And put a paralyze on him just to be safe. There we go. That's another. You see, I keep thinking Nathaniel's a bandit. He looks like a bandit, doesn't he? <laughs> um. Uh, there's a random one over there. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, you've all just suggested bug slogans now. <laughs> uh, you crack me up, you lot. You really do. Uh, I need these scavengers to stop coming in. I want to tell you about the funny thing that I saw. It's very rude of these scavengers to keep attacking me when I've got, you know, anecdotes to tell. Um, oh, there's a bloody tree down there as well. Jesus Christ, are they ever going to stop? <laughs> um, and we just keep running into more groups of enemies. Do another group heal. Trouble is, I'm not paying that much attention because I keep looking at the chat. <laughs> um, right, okay, so. <laughs> uh, right. You know what will happen, won't you? The fight will go on so long, I'll forget what the funny thing was. That's what's going to happen. Uh, I'm not going to forget what the funny thing was. It was too funny. Um, <laughs> uh, right, so... Paralyze! Oh my god, Anders, what are you doing lying down on the job? I need you to paralyze a tree. You should not be lying on your back on the floor when I need you to paralyze a tree. It's very irresponsible of you. There we go. Uh, there's more over here. <sighs> Dear me. It's almost like the game doesn't want me to tell you this funny thing. <laughs> uh, take a health bolus. We've got so many, and I'm always really frugal about taking health boluses, like because I, I try to save them. But right now, we've got so many, I may as well just use them, whether I need to or not. <laughs> um, right. Rid of this dick. <clears throat> and there's more red over there but is this enough to like no this is not enough to end the battle apparently we have to go deal with whatever's over there mm -hmm. I mean that's quite a long way away I can't even see them hello Oh, hello! <laughs> you weren't even on my map, man! It's not even you I was looking at! Oh, I think he was too high up for my code of call to work. That's no good. Oh dear, Anders might be about to die. That's no good either. You see, this is why I need Volana. Um, so that, you know, if I lose one mage, I've got a backup mage. Uh, People tell me I can pause the game. I know, but I want to, like, you know, finish what I've started. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I know this is me talking, but I do want to finish what I started. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, okay. So, triggered a trap. Dora, you're supposed to tell me about the traps. For heaven's sake, woman. Everybody's just, you know, forgetting their role at the minute. 
and as it's on the ground when I need to paralyze trees. Dora's not telling me about traps. Like, come on, we need to work as a team. My old team had this down. Wayne and Morrigan and Alistair, we were good. <laughs> I need to get the rest of you up to snuff. What I need to do. <laughs> Finish what you started. Who are you and what have you done with my bitch? You know what? I was filling out a job application the other day. I'm not, like, actually actively looking for another job, but, you know, if I ever see anything that, like, interests me, you know, I, I put a little application in, because you never know. Why, why not? Why not? And, uh... <laughs> one of the questions... <laughs> no, they ask you stupid questions. Uh, you know, stupid kind of job application type questions. And one of the questions was, give an example of a time... <laughs> When you remained focused on a task despite dis distractions. <laughs> and I honestly just sat there and thought, have I ever remained focused on a task despite distractions? Has that ever happened? <laughs> honestly, I just laughed at myself. I was like, you don't know who you're asking, do you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh dear. Anyway. <laughs> Right, I can tell you about the funny thing that uh, happened. What was the funny thing that happened, guys? I can't remember. Oh, yes, I can. Um, okay, so I was walking past the DVD section in the shop today. Got it. Um, <clears throat> and I, I glanced out of the corner of my eye because we've got all like the Christmas DVDs in for Christmas, you know. And it's kind of like the cheap shit that nobody wants, you know what I mean? The only movies that are on DVD now in shops tend to be, like, the cheap shit that, you know, nobody actually... Like, the stuff that isn't on Netflix because it's too crap. So you can only get it on DVD. <laughs> um, and there... I mean, you may know about it because it came out, like, ten years ago. <laughs> um... <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it came out ten years ago, so you may you may already know of it, but I'd never heard of it before. And I glanced out the corner of my eye, and I saw this Christmas DVD, and I saw the name of it, and I paused and looked back to read the name again, and then I read it a third time just to make sure that I had seen what I thought I had seen. So this is a, it's like a somebody is. Ogren's just. Oh, Ogren, you're ruining my story. There we go. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I could hear you running, but you weren't moving. Um, yes, the, it, it's a it's a sort of um, knockoff version of Home Alone, right? It's a, it's a cheap budget version of Home Alone with a dog instead of a child, right? So it's like the story of Home Alone, but instead of a child gets left home alone, a dog gets left home alone, which already doesn't really work because dogs get left home alone all the time. But do you want to know the, the name of this movie? <laughs> This knockoff of Home Alone, only with a dog instead of a child. <laughs> I can't even say it. <laughs> I can't even say it, it's too ridiculous. <laughs> it's called... <clears throat> it's called... <laughs> Bring up a word document and type it. It's called Bone Alone. <laughs> this was on a fucking shelf in a supermarket. Bone Alone. That's what it's called. I thought, what the fuck is that? Some kind of a Home Alone inspired porn movie or something? What the fuck? <laughs> no, this is a this is a movie for kids. <laughs> bone alone <laughs> and I googled it and it has like a one star rating so <laughs> <laughs> but I'm tempted to buy it just for the laughs <laughs> honest to god I was just stood in the aisle looking at it you know when you look at something and you think I must be reading that wrong. <laughs> Bone alone, the 
Christmas movie. <laughs> I mean, you know, if that's what how you want to spend your Christmas, who am I to judge? Anyway. <laughs> oh, God. I think I've actually given myself a headache from laughing too much. My ribs hurt quite a lot. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> have some chocolate uh, what should i have i'm gonna have some gooey caramel soft buttery camera caramel wrapped in a deliciously smooth milk chocolate cup that's what i'm gonna have and then i've only got the uh the fancy ones left the uh the fudge brownie and the crunchy praline those are the ones i've got left right should we carry on with whatever it was we were doing i can't remember what we were doing can anybody remember what we were doing i think we need to uh Go back on ourselves and loot all of the bodies that we left in our wake. <laughs> oh god. Right. Mmm. <laughs> Look, that's really nice caramel. Really, really nice caramel. That's almost as nice as caramel that you make yourself. Because, uh. <clears throat> I started making caramel shortbread uh, ages ago, years ago, about 10 years ago. Maybe. My brother started making caramel shortbread and then I started making caramel shortbread to try and warm up him. Sort of, you know, be like, my caramel shortbread's better than your caramel shortbread. And then we would get into like caramel shortbread walls where I would make it one week and then he would make it the next week and then I would make it the next week. But like try something different. Like there was one time I put white chocolate on it and like feathered it to give it a feathered effect and we just got into this caramel shortbread war where we just tried to constantly make <laughs> caramel shortbread that was better than the other one's caramel shortbread but anyway the point is it was like homemade caramel it wasn't like caramel that you buy in a tin and once you've had homemade caramel you never go back I i've never ever ever found caramel that is as good like shop-bought caramel anywhere e even like proper posh um places like you know posh bakeries and things like that that do caramel shortbread. I've never, ever, 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 ever had caramel um, that's better than, than making your own caramel at home. Um, yeah. Homemade caramel's the best, man. <coughs> oh, dear. Uh, I think I'm getting a bit of a cold, you know. A bit of a dicky throat for a while. Uh, right, so... Uh, this is another tangenty live stream, isn't it? Ever so occasionally we have a live stream where I actually like, you know, stay stay focused mostly on the task at hand. But in this one, not so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, uh, <laughs> yes, it is Thornton's. Uh, Welsh friend. Uh, you know what? Personally, I think Thornton's is a little bit overrated. Just saying. I mean, it's nice. It's chocolate. I'll eat it. But, you know, I think it's a little bit overrated. I think I just have cheap tastes, though, because whenever I have, like, posh chocolate, I'm always like, Cadbury's is better. Like, <laughs> or Galaxy. Galaxy chocolate's, like, nicer. Because I don't really like um, Lindor chocolate either. I think Lindor chocolate's just a bit, I don't know. My mother loves um, the, it's lint, isn't it? It's lint chocolate and then the Lindor is like the boxes that you get. Um, well, my mother loves them and I'm just like, I I've never really understood the, uh, the Lindor chocolate. Uh, but yeah, I think I just have cheap tastes. Because, <laughs> you know, you give me like really posh, expensive chocolate and I'm like, I'd rather just have a bar of Cadbury's love. Or even like uh, own brand chocolate. Most supermarket own brand chocolate is actually fine. The, yeah, little chocolate is lovely. Especially the, the white chocolate that the, the little do. That's like the best white chocolate I've ever had in my life. Not like they're very, very cheap one because they do like a very, very cheap one. But then it, it's like, like the mid-range one that they do. It's like 39 pence a bar or something like that. For like a... I think it's 100 grams. Um, that, that chocolate's flipping beautiful. And then their milk chocolate. That's like the best chocolate. If you're making like chocolate chip cookies or something like that. Oh my God. That's the best chocolate. Uh, anyway. Um, 
fuck's sake. Uh, what are we doing? What are we doing? Who knows? I don't know. And if I don't know, what chance do the rest of you have? Right. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, Soulmate thinks Quality Street is overrated. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I like a Quality Street. I think Roses is overrated. I don't like Roses. Out of my way. I need to get out of here. Uh, but I don't mind Quality Street. Um, but celebrations are best. I do like celebrations. And Hero's kind of alright. Um, calm down, what's wrong? Can I help? Who are you? Uh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, who are you? I'm no one. I just want to get out of here. Uh, uh, too many toffees in Quality Street? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose, and they are they are always like left in the bottom, aren't they? <clears throat> and then you have to. I I always like eating like about six or seven toffee pennies all in one go, and you just like have a massive mouthful of toffee. <laughs> I always enjoy doing that. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, who's after you? The elf. She makes the trees come alive. All we wanted was some easy money from the caravans, but. Make her help me. She's here. Gotta get away. I did not expect to see one of the Durgenlin here. Who are you? And what do you want? Is that what elves call dwarves? I'm assuming that's what elves call dwarves. Uh, what did you do to that man? He's terrified. I'm investigating the attacks on the caravan. I'm a Grey Warden. Uh, I'm investigating the attacks on the caravan. Then you do work for the merchants. Tell the human merchants to release my sister, and then tell them never to come back. Consider this a warning. All right, love, chill your boots. Uh huh. I like Valana. I know she's hard to like, but I like her anyway. I always like the characters who are hard to like because I'm always like looking for the good in them. I'm like that. I'm always like you know when somebody when a character comes across as really horrible, I'm always like oh, but maybe they're just misunderstood. <laughs> Although I'm not like that with Loghain. But, um, yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm often like that with characters who like a lot of people don't like. I'm just sort of like, I try and look for the good in them. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Nathaniel, you can have some dexterity and some cunning. <clears throat> and then you can have... You can have... I keep forgetting he's a ranger. I can make him summon things. Uh, yeah, we'll get you some more archery. Uh, uh, Valana has Morgan's hairstyle. Yes, yeah, she does. And Anders has Duncan's hairstyle. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> Magpie with a mouthful of toffee doesn't sound any different. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. <laughs> um, uh, right. Oh, bandits, 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 bandits. I'm going to let Dora put some poison on our swords because she always forgets to do that. She always forgets to do I don't forget. It's her that forgets. Uh, it's not my fault. <laughs> uh, right, so... Um... Anders, can you maybe like get your ass to somewhere where you can actually like hit the enemies? That would kind of be useful, my love. Uh, you can heal up Dora a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Anders even has Duncan's earring. Yes, he does actually. That's a good point. Uh, right. So, <laughs> uh, right. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> oh man, I wish you could push people off uh, cliffs and stuff because that would be the perfect person to push off a cliff, wouldn't he? But he'd, he'd be saved by an invisible wall. Uh, do a little group heal. I can hear a cat. Hello, pretty. What's up? What's up, good cat? What's the matter? Uh, let me kill these bandits. What's up? There we go. You okay? What? 
What's the matter? What? You want cuddles? You want cuddles? Yay or nay? Undecided. Hmm? Undecided whether she wants cuddles or not. I don't think she knows what she wants most of the time. <laughs> it's just cats, isn't it? It's much like me. I don't know what I want most of the time either. What's up, Squeak? What? Mm hmm. Where are you going? I've lost you. Oh my god, I've lost you. Where are you gone? There you are. Oh, oh, are you coming up? Are you coming up? Are you coming up? Yes, no, yes, no, yeah, yeah, oh, oh, thinking about it. No, maybe? Oh, 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 are you coming up? She's got one paw on my knee. Are you coming up? No, not coming up. Now she's wandered off. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Coming up? Yeah, maybe? No? Oh, she's up. Hello. Okay, you know what this means, don't you? You know what this means. We need the kitten drama screen. Because there's a putty. She's stopping me from doing my very important work. Work. <laughs> yeah, work. This is my second job. It doesn't pay me any money, but still. <laughs> it's like a volunteer job. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Squeaky? <sighs> oh, well, this might be us for the next 10 minutes. <clears throat> <laughs> Off camera cuddling drama, says Fred. Yeah, that sounds. <laughs> I don't know how. What that sounds like. <laughs> sounds in the same vein as Bone Alone, that does. Off camera cuddling drama, that could mean anything, couldn't it? <laughs> uh, right. Yep. <sighs> well. Just let, let all the people just enjoy that kitten video while you're here on my knee. Hmm? Gonna have a chocolate. What chocolate should I have? I've got fudge brownie and crunchy praline left. I think crunchy praline is going to be the best one. So I'm going to have fudge brownie. I've got, I've got two of each. So, you know. It is fudge brownie. Uh, 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 no sniffing my chocolates. Get your puddy germs all over them, won't you? Ooh, that one's nice. <clears throat> it's like a little mini brownie. Covered in chocolate. Oh, I, I like that. It's quite good. I'm going to level up Anders while we're waiting, but it's going to be off screen, so you're not going to see what abilities I'm giving him. This is a little secret just between me and you, Star. It's a little secret what abilities I'm giving Anders because I can't actually reach my keyboard past the cat to uh, put the game screen back on so you know it's just going to be a secret or should I put the points into star you you point at what I what, what you want me to put the points into hmm okay okay I put the points into that thing okay hmm <laughs> what spells should we give him I can give him one spell star what do you want to give him hmm no, I don't think that one's a very good idea. It doesn't really complement his style. You know what I mean? Hmm? Should we maybe give him... Should we maybe give him... Should we maybe give... Oh, should we give him that one? I think that's... That, I don't think that's a terrible idea. I think there's, you know, there's times where we could use that. She's looking at me like, no, that's a terrible, terrible decision. <laughs> it's a terrible decision. Why would you ever give him that? <laughs> I think that's, you know what, I'm going to trust my instincts. We're going to give him that one. 
Yeah. We might be stuck here for a while, guys. Get neck scratches on you. Like a good neck scratch, don't you? Mm. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. And a bit of a chin scratch. Hmm? A bit of a chin scratch. I love cat chins. I think I think the chin is the cutest bit of the cat. I think it's just so adorable. Their little chins. I mean, all of them is adorable, obviously. I think their little chins are like the most adorable. <laughs> and when they're little, little kittens, like little tiny kittens, I, the thing I can't get over is their tongues. I think they have the cutest tongues. <laughs> and when I first went to see them, I think they were five weeks when I went to see them. They were ten weeks when I when I got them. But I think when I first went to see them. I think they were five weeks, four or five weeks. I'm like, maybe yeah. I don't think they were as young as four weeks. I think yeah, you know, it was I think it was like five or six, something like that. And they were little they were so little and tiny, and the, just the thing that I could not get over was just their tiny little kitten tongues when they were like grooming themselves and stuff. And they, <laughs> They were just so tiny. They were just like adult cat tongues, but little. I just couldn't get over it. I was like, look at their little tongues. <laughs> and and now you've got boring big adult cat tongues. Hmm. <laughs> um. <laughs> Would you like to get off my knee now, please? Because, I mean, yeah, I love you a lot too, but, you know, there's people watching, man. People from, like, across planet Earth are watching this. Not many of them, but they're from all four corners. <sighs> Three watchers no right now, YouTube says, says Fred. Yeah. It was up to five a while back, though, so, you know. I blame Common Misconception for his terrible internet. <laughs> Dropping in and out. That's who I blame. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, it went up to four briefly and then one disappeared. I don't know. It's YouTube, isn't it? Being weird. Just doesn't want me to get too big for my boots that's it that's what it is just you know if i if i knew how famous i actually was i'd be insufferable <laughs> i'm gonna have a a, a a a crunchy praline and then i'm gonna decide which one of the two i like the most and that'll dictate which order i eat the last two chocolates in so hmm hmm Crunchy Brawling is definitely the best. That's like a white Kinder Bueno. Kinder Buenos are the best, aren't they? Mm. Mm hmm. That's definitely the best of the two. It's the one we'll leave for last. <laughs> Never let a big cat lick you. The tongue is for scraping meat off the bone. Yeah. Although, if you're close enough to a big cat, like a lion, for example, that it could lick you, I think you've got bigger problems. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> I don't think I would be. I don't think the first thing I would be worried about was being licked. <laughs> um, yeah. I've seen a picture of a lion though, with like a piece of meat actually like hanging on its tongue because it, they're so sharp. Its tongue is so sharp. That the meat is like, just hangs there. <sighs> so yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Yes, cat's still just getting a neck massage. Mm. If I try and play the game, will you will you just sit there and be be good, or will you keep trying to like you know lick my fingers and stuff? Because that's the trouble. It's like I'm fine with us sitting on my knee, but the moment I like go to touch the keyboard or the mouse and like stop stroking her, she's just gonna like stick her head in the way and start you know trying to get closer to me hands. That's the problem. And then she'll start stepping on the keyboard and stuff like that. If she would just sit there, it would be fine, but she doesn't. <clears throat> mm. hey, now, you, now you're getting a face massage. Massage those chubby cheeks. Hey, those chubby gerbil cheeks that you've got. Yeah. Yeah. And get the crusty bits out of your eye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're so soft, buddy. It's weird, sometimes they're really soft and then other times they're like not. I mean, they feel a bit sort of, I don't want to say greasy, but like they're not as soft as usual. And then sometimes you touch them and they're like so soft. It doesn't seem to like be a pattern to like, you know, it doesn't seem to be connected to what they've eaten or anything. Probably hormones in it, something like that. <laughs> uh, I need a third hand, says Common Misconception. She would only go after that one as well. Um, yeah. <sighs> We're at one hour and 17 minutes. And you're just here on my lap. Like we don't have all day. Really? Should I finish my chocolates? Mm, should I have the fudge brownie one? Whoa! Nelly dropped me fudge brownie. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine? That would be terrible. Hmm? Not as bad as dropping me crunchy prolly, though. <laughs> Security ostrich, my kitty is silver with green eyes. She's so pretty and soft, but also recently found out how to turn off my PC. Yeah, mine used to do that as well. I've put a, um, I've literally had to put stuff over the, uh, the power button. Oh, she's on the move. She's on the move. Are you heading for the windowsill? She's heading for the windowsill. There we go. She's on the windowsill. Yeah. Um, I've had to put loads of stuff on top of my computer because when they were little kittens, they would jump on top of my computer and they would, yeah, press the power button and turn the power, turn the computer off. Uh, speaking of which, she is currently on top of my computer. I'm like, really? Could you not go back down onto the windowsill? Go back down onto the windowsill. No, 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 no. What have you just knocked off? No, 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 no. You can't stay there. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. Don't make me come up there. <laughs> come on. Just go on the windowsill. Go on the windowsill. Go down. Go down. No. No. No, putty. Go down. Go down. Go down. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Now stay there. Dipstick. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> um. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, but they also turned it on a few times as well. Like I would come home from work or I'd wake up in the morning and my computer would be on. And I'd be like, for fuck's sake. Um, I'm going to eat my crunchy prolly. May as well at this point, right? <laughs> I don't know. I would have... An entire box of chocolates just of that crunchy praline. That's really bloody nice. The rest of them were sort of eh, but the crunchy praline was like really nice. <clears throat> I'm gonna have a drink of my water and then I promise we'll get back to the game. <laughs> oh my god, get off the computer! No, get, get off! No, get down, get down. Get 
Don't look at me like that. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. What is it? They look at you with their little confused faces like they have no idea what they've done wrong. You know what you've done wrong. Get down. Get down. Get don't don't you lick my fingers and think that you can get out of this by looking cute. Just get get down. 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 <laughs> down. Get down. Get down. Just but get down. Okay. She got down. She got down because she decided that she wanted to be down, not because I told her to get down. <laughs> Isn't it true that like cats understand commands just as well as dogs do? It's just cats kind of aren't bothered about actually obeying them. <laughs> I'm sure that's actually a thing. Uh, right, okay, so. Oh look, we're, uh, we're playing Dragon Age. Dra oh, can anybody remember that we were playing Dragon Age? It seems so long ago. Right. <laughs> oh dear. Um. Right, so there's a thing down there that we need to uh, do something with. We uh, gave up on that during uh, during Constance's playthrough, didn't we? We gave up on the uh, the, the the stone circle thing. <laughs> um, Read in the chat. It might be. <laughs> Uh, uh, right, okay, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, the game saved, that means we might be going into like a pretty serious battle and I'm still just giggling at cats and chocolate and stuff. Um, <laughs> Uh, right, okay. So, oh, there's a giant tree. Hello, giant tree. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why the giant tree surprised me. You know, there's been several giant trees so far. Uh, right, okay. Let's get, let's get the high ground, guys. We need the high ground. Right. So, <laughs> Star Wars has taught me anything. It's that we need the high ground. Uh, right. Yeah. But I, I just... Nathaniel really does just look like a bandit, doesn't he? Um... Right. Uh, read in the chat, don't mind me. Right, so. Uh, let's see if we can do a nice, well placed cone of cold in that kind of direction. That got a good number of them. It also got Ogryn, but uh, that's fine. We don't need Ogryn, do we? <laughs> um, uh, see if we can shatter that giant tree. Well, we shattered somebody. We didn't shatter the giant tree. But we shattered someone. Uh, right. <clears throat> oh, Ogren's gonna die. Sorry, I'm reading the chat and like not paying any attention at all. Can you heal Ogren? Because I think you're gonna be able to hear heal him quicker than he can take a health bonus. Because he's sort of on the ground at the minute. I'll have him take a health bonus anyway. There we go. Oh god, you need a bigger health bonus than that. Jesus. Um, yeah, bigger health bolt as Ogryn. There we go, lad. Right. Okay. Dogs live to please their masters, said Fred. Well, that in itself shows a sort of, you know, lack of intelligence, doesn't it? <laughs> lack of self-respect. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, I much prefer cats. Cats are, you know, know their own minds, don't they? They know what they want. They know how to get it. Yeah. All right, all right. Being manipulative shows much higher intelligence than being, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, I don't know, agreeable. You know what I mean? Um, I can't think of the word that probably articulates what I'm trying to say. But you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> uh, there's a Ferelden sword, common Ferelden sword, driven deep into the ground. Uh, something, something, something. Uh, of the campsite looks as though it was planted here on purpose. Uh... Don't these Dalish elves travel in packs? What's with a tiny camp? And here, looks like there was a bit of a fight, but no bodies. Just all these weapons. 
something smells here, Commander. And it isn't me. Uh, given many thousands of years more of human captivity, cats would likely uh, become more subservient. Like dogs, probably, yes. But that, do you know what that means, don't you? Dogs are basically a slave race. <laughs> We've made them subservient by turning them into what is basically a slave race. <laughs> <laughs> cats, cats still have enough enough self respect not to succumb to it. Uh, yeah, shallow graves. Uh, small stone cairns mark these graves, which appear to have been dug recently. I think that's it. Uh, Elven prayer for the dead. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm laughing at the chat, don't mind me. Right, so, discarded weaponry. Got it. This is a pile of rolled and weaponry that has been dumped in a corner of the camp. I can't believe Valana fell for it, you know. I mean, you know, she seems like a smart girl. I mean, I know our sister's missing and everything like that, and she's emotionally distraught. But still, she seems like a smart girl, doesn't she? Not obvious that all of this has been staged. Uh... Fred loves dogs because they fall asleep on top of your feet and keep them warm. Yeah, cats do that too, Fred. In fact, Star is literally my lap warmer uh, of a night time when I'm watching the telly. She comes and sleeps on my lap and keeps it warm. And then once she's, you know, bored of sleeping in my lap, she gets up <laughs> and moves away. And I'm always like, no, stay, you're warm. <laughs> um... Uh... Uh, cats are basically wild I mean yeah I kind of get that but at the same time you can tell the difference between a domesticated cat and a feral cat and a feral cat if they're not taken out of the wild early enough will stay a feral cat like forever and you really you really can't tell the difference um, but yeah uh, all all right, all right. Greenery is making my beard itch. Uh, Albert doesn't like the greenery. Oh, all right, Albert. Can I get you a ladder so you can get off my oh, I was about to say, would you prefer the deep roads? But he probably would. He's a dwarf. Um, oh, look, there's a tree down there. Ah, hello, tree. I think we have the high ground on you, love. Are you going to have to run all the way around to get to us? Yes, you are. Oh, bless your little cotton socks. <laughs> yeah. See if my, uh, see if my, see if uh, Nathaniel and Hujik can, uh, uh, yes, Anders can uh, kill you before uh, you get up here. And can you witness grasp him? Mm, got like half his health down. Uh, you lot, stay where you are. Don't run to the tree. Make the tree come to us. That's our tactic. Where's the, where's the third one? Where, where, where's Ogren? Where, Ogren? Where are you? Uh, oh, you're right in front of the giant. What are you doing down here, you weirdo? Ugh. Honestly. There's more trees there that have not been triggered for reasons. Um. um sorry. <laughs> I was reading the chat and I've ended up coming in completely the wrong direction. <laughs> Uh, oh my god, who just said time to die? Because it sounded pretty really scary. I think it was Nathaniel. But that was like a villain voice, that was. Uh, okay. Uh, modern dogs suffer from depression and severe anxiety. So do cats. Uh, sometimes. Uh, some cats do, anyway. I'm not saying all cats do, but like, you know. But I think with dogs, a lot of the uh, anxiety problems come from bad breeding, doesn't it? When they're like, you know, like puppy farms and things like that, where there's a lot of inbreeding and stuff goes on. Um, and it creates a lot of mental illness. That's where you get like, dogs that are like really aggressive, like unpredictably aggressive and can't sort of be trained out of it. It's usually bad breeding. Um, yeah quite a big problem. Whereas with cats, I don't think that's as much of a problem because cats aren't as valuable, you know, most, for the most part. I mean, there are expensive breeds, but even they aren't, like, as sought after as, as dogs are. Um, so, yeah. Uh, 
Mm. Modern life isn't really suited to, uh, to having pets when people are gone for most of the day. I know. I often think that about my cats. <sighs> that I'm, you know. Which is why I got two rather than one, because I didn't want one to be on their own. But I mean, I definitely couldn't get a dog when I'm out for like nine hours of the day to go to work. Um, uh, but yeah, I wanted to get two cats so they would at least have each other. But then when I am here all day, to be honest, I think it kind of annoys them that I'm because uh, because like when when I'm out, they just sleep through the day. Uh, but then when I'm here, I sort of keep waking them up when I'm like you know moving around and doing stuff. I think it just pisses them off a bit. <laughs> um, uh, going back and reading through the chat now. Don't mind me. Uh, dogs are a lot of work yeah i find the idea of getting a dog quite intimidating to be honest i, I don't know also i'm not 100 percent comfortable around dogs i'm not scared of them or anything but i'm just like not comfortable around them you know what i mean you yeah. know uh, yeah. Can't take the responsibility of being the emotional support for a dog. I know, right? <laughs> it's another reason why I don't want children. Um, um, Persian cats have about as much trouble breathing as pugs. Yeah, I think they do, actually. I think that is a problem with Persian cats. And as time goes on, I think it will become more of a problem about bad breeding in cats as cats become more valuable and stuff like that, because cats are definitely taking off, aren't they? Um, which is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, oh my god, Fred! <laughs> Your dad and uh, stepmother train, well, seeing eye dogs, which we would just call guide dogs. I, uh, I used to want to train guide dogs. That was one of the things I wanted to do when I was sort of thinking about things that I might want to do. Um, long after I had left school and, and any possibility of going to college or anything like that kind of faded. Um, <laughs> I think you're too young when they make you make those decisions, aren't you, really? Like, I was way too young to know what I wanted to do until I was about 23 or something like that. But I kind of, I, I, I don't know, I fancied working with animals. It was one of the things that I kind of thought about. And I thought training guide dogs would be, you know, even, even though I've, I've said I'm not that comfortable around dogs, but you know... I would sort of, you know, I would become comfortable around dogs, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. That's an awesome job, though, yeah. I bet it's not well paid, though. <laughs> I bet it's I bet it's one of those jobs where, like, the people who do it are, like, really, really underappreciated. Um, uh, mm hmm. Yes, now we're talking about how you're too young to make those choices. It's just annoying, isn't it? Because, like, when you're, like... Because, like, school did not suit me for so many reasons. And when you're a teenager, you're going through a lot of shit anyway. And then if you've got other shit on top of that, like if you maybe don't have the best home life or whatever, you know, and you're expected to be making decisions that are going to impact the rest of your life and choosing what you want to do with yourself. And when you just have no idea, like I didn't, 
you know, I just left school, which I think was the right decision because it wasn't doing anything for me. I wasn't going to pass me exams, you know. Um, but then, like, by the time you've sorted everything out and you've sorted yourself out and you sort of, like, start to realise the kind of things that you would want to do, by that point, you know, you've got rent to pay and bills and, <laughs> and like, you need to work full time to support yourself and you don't really have time to, like, put yourself through college or anything like that or university. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there are still ways to do it, don't get me wrong. I, I certainly haven't, like, completely given up on the idea of maybe, you know, retraining or whatever. Um, uh, there are definitely ways to do it. I don't, like, think that all doors have been closed or anything like that. I've certainly not... I've certainly not succumbed to the idea that, oh my god, I'm just going to work in retail for my entire life. Um, but yeah, you're, you're definitely... They definitely make you make those decisions too young. There's a dead scholar over here. We should, we should probably at some point focus on the actual game that we're supposed to be playing, shouldn't we? Uh, a scholar's journal. Uh, <laughs> ordered roast boar at the inn. Love that stuff. I shared the meal with a weary old traveller newly arrived via the pilgrim's path. Told me that he stumbled upon an old, uh, an odd structure of stones in the Wending Wood. He showed me a souvenir. He brought back one of the smaller stones. It looked familiar somehow. Uh, I remember where I saw that stone. An old history book in Dedrum's Chantry. The Tevinters built structures to harness mag uh, mystical energies. Most have been destroyed. The stones used for all construction. Yet the traveller claims uh, this one survives. I was about to go off on a tangent there about something. Shall I go off on a tangent? Just that bit where it said the stones used for construction. You remember how I said I was going to see a giant model of the moon for my birthday? Well, we went to see the giant model of the moon, which was very cool, but it was in Hexham Cathedral, which is a very nice cathedral. And I was, I, I, but I've never been to it before. And uh, I, I found the cathedral actually far more fascinating than the giant model of the moon. Um, and what's interesting about it is it's got a, it's got a seventh century crypt under it that was built by Saint, Saint, I think it was Wilfred, who was the guy who I think built the place, maybe? I mean, he might not have built it, he might have just, I, anyway, whatever. Um, I can't remember all the history that I learned. Um, but quite recently they unearthed Roman stones because there's, there's, there's an old Roman settlement quite near Hexham, which I also haven't been to, but want to go to. It's on Hadrian's Wall, because um, Hexham's right by Hadrian's Wall. Um, and so they think that they just, like, you know, took stones from the Roman settlement to build the cathedral. Because they found Roman, like, old Roman stones um, in bits of the cathedral, but particularly down in the crypt. And one of them was a tombstone from a Roman soldier with, with like, you know, his name and stuff engraved on it. So they'd obviously just taken a tombstone from a, a Roman grave to build this cathedral. And it, just, it was just really interesting. But like also they'd, they'd, they found other Roman stones with like um, <sighs> engravings of Roman gods on them and stuff like that that had been used to build this Christian cathedral. Like, it, it I don't know, there was just something kind of cool. Uh, uh, maybe cool's the wrong word. I don't know, just interesting about it that they used Roman stones with Roman gods engraved on them. <laughs> in the foundations of a Christian cathedral. There was just something about that that I was kind of like, I don't know, it was, <laughs> I don't know, it was just one of those interesting things, but they've got this tombstone that they uncovered because they took it out when they found it. They, they, did, they found it quite recently, like a few years ago, they found this Roman soldier's tombstone. He died when he was 25. They had his name and everything because they got it from the engravings and they'd found it like in the foundations of the building in this crypt. Um, and they took it out and it's on display now so you can see this tombstone of this 25 year old Roman soldier. Oh, it was just, it was really cool. It was really cool. That's what I did on my birthday. I very much enjoyed it actually. Hexham's lovely. I never think to go over to Hexham. Anyway! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> now I need to go back and read the chat again. Oh my god, this stream has fallen apart more than the last one did. We like it when it falls apart though, don't we? It's more fun. Um, uh,
So I've read the chart, do I, V? Right, okay. <laughs> Fucking hell. We were, uh, we're one hour 40 minutes in here. Yeah, Jesus. I was reading this, wasn't I? Uh, he was at the inn again and sold me the stone. I'm heading to the Wending Wood as soon as I find a caravan, although people seem wary of the place. Finally found a caravan. Nervous lot, though barely halted to let me out. Found the structure and spent the day studying it. Burned myself on the magic fire several times, but I think I figured it out. Must make a path of fire that connects all the stones in a single loop. Will attempt after I drive away whatever creatures making that rustling noise. Uh huh. Which was probably a giant magical tree. You would think that if, like, you know, the caravan picked him up and he wanted to be taken to the Wending Wood, and they know that like caravans have been being attacked in the Wending Wood, and everybody who goes there dies. You think that they would be like, you know what? Maybe the Wending Wood not the smartest idea, mate. Like, you know, a lot of people have died there. Do you think they would at least tell him? You know what I mean? You would, you would, wouldn't you? You would be a good Samaritan and kind of go, something is killing people in the Wending Wood. Maybe wait until they figure out what that is before you go and explore your magical stones. But no, apparently they didn't bother to do that. <laughs> uh, how am I doing on energy levels? I feel all right. I feel all right. I need to, I need to drink some water because I haven't been drinking enough water. My throat's going to give out. Oh, Jesus. Oh, too many tangents. I'm out of breath, man. <laughs> um, uh, right, okay. So, uh, there's a granite deposit. We'll pick that up for Wade or someone. No, it was the dwarf guy who wanted granite, didn't he? There's a blood lotus. Isn't the botanist around here somewhere? I'm sure she is. There's... Oh, there's Darkspawn stuff. Are we about to get attacked by Darkspawn? I think we probably are. There they are. Hello, Mr. Herlock Emissary. You just put me in a crushing prison, you little arsehole. That's not very nice. You don't go around putting people in crushing prisons. Not very hospitable. Not very polite. I'm going to paralyse you so you can't do it to anybody else. And then I'm going to give Dora a bit of a heal. Hopefully she'll survive long enough before she gets crushed to death. And then if we can all just attack the emissary. There we go, Dora's fine. Of course she is. She could deal with being crushed a little bit. I had a dream the other night, you know. This is another tangent. Is anybody counting how many tangents we've been on? I don't know. But I had a dream the other night that I was pinned down under a, uh, a brick wall. Slowly suffocating to death. Just slowly being crushed, right? This was my dream. And I woke up and Scorpio was lying on my chest. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I am being crushed to death. <laughs> he just curled himself up on my chest and was asleep on my chest. And I was like, oh, that's why I'm having dreams about being crushed to death. I was like, Scorpio, get off me. I can't breathe. <laughs> anyway. Uh, right, so. Uh... <laughs> Um, right, so. <laughs> oh, God, I make myself giggle sometimes. Right. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, right, so. <laughs> That's a gen lock. I thought I was Ogryn briefly there. I've got Nathaniel looking like bloody bandits and then I've got Ogryn just looking like Genlux. <laughs> At least Anders doesn't look like uh, any villains. <clears throat> right. <laughs> it's a good dream, scary ostrich. Do hornets sting you? I didn't think hornets stung you. I thought hornets were, uh, were all right. Uh, we used to have loads of hornets uh, around where I lived up in Scotland. And there must have been a nest nearby because there was like a massive one that I'm assuming was like the queen. But then I was like, did the queens come out? Or do they stay in the nest? I don't know. But there was a fucking massive one. Every year there was a fucking massive one. I don't know if it was the same one every year, but like, you know, there were a lot of hornets. But I was never bothered by the hornets. I was never afraid of the hornets. The wasps. <clears throat> 
they were little fucking assholes. We had a wasp's nest one year as well. That wasn't fun. Um, anyway, <laughs> fucking hell. I need to make another rule on the live stream rules that just says something like, talk about anything except the game we're playing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, so... Right. So... <laughs> um... Uh, Timothy's here! Hello, Timothy! Uh... You've missed like a million tangents, Timothy, but you haven't missed very much Dragon Age, so you know, that's something. Uh, there we go. Uh, we've talked about everything. We've talked about, oh, cathedrals and Romans and cats and dogs and college and... I can't even remember all the tangents we've been on. Christmas films with questionable names. <laughs> Engraved statue up there that I need to get for some quest that I can't quite remember. Uh... Oh my god, we're up to seven viewers. Jesus. If YouTube's saying there's seven, there's probably about, like, I don't know, 14 or something like that. But let's not think about that. Let's not think about that. <clears throat> and one like. Seven viewers and only one like. Just saying. <laughs> I'm not going to become one of those YouTube. I'm not going to become one of those like and subscribe YouTubers. I remember back in the day where that used to be frowned upon. You remember in the old days of YouTube, asking for likes used to be frowned upon, and now everybody does it. Mind you, sponsorship deals used to be frowned upon. You remember when that was a thing where if anybody ever took a sponsorship deal, it was sort of like, <gasps> you took a sponsorship deal, even. <laughs> and now, like you know, that's kind of normal as well. I miss the old days of YouTube, you know, when it was kind of innocent and. Everybody just made videos for fun. They weren't trying to become millionaires or anything like that. You know, like this channel. Every channel was like this channel back then, wasn't it? Those were the good old days. This is not my first YouTube channel, you know. I've had a few before. Although I haven't had anywhere I've actually, like, talked or been on camera or anything like that. I've mostly been, like, editing together clips of things and stuff like that. I used to do. I used to be quite a good editor, believe it or not. Now I'm just a lazy editor because I just can't be asked. <laughs> Life's too short, man. Life's too short to, like, perfectly edit stuff. But, oh, God. Back when I was a teenager and I had, like, time, I used to spend, like, weeks sometimes editing just one video. I would, like, edit together clips of video games and stuff like that. Uh, anyway. Um... <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, now I've got four likes. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh. Right, okay, so... Yeah, we've got the statues over there. Here. <laughs> Fred's making me laugh. Okay, hello, statue. It has been a long time. I have forgotten my name. But I am a warrior. I am Avar. And I am cursed. What is that accent supposed to be? Is it meant to be Welsh? Is it meant to be Scottish? <clears throat> I can't tell. Also, the voice sounds really familiar. But I can't think. You know when you can, like, you know when you hear a voice and you can, like, almost picture the person that you've heard the voice on, but then at the same time you can't quite? He sounds like someone, but I can't think who. Um, uh, I've no time for talking statues. <laughs> Dora would just get called over by a statue and she'd be like, you know what, mate, I'm not interested. <laughs> Talking statue, yeah, I, I, it's just like, like, you know, who cares? Um, yeah, what should I call you? I care not what I am called. 
Seasons beyond counting. I was a man. A man to be feared. A man of war. The Deventer mages, they came here seeking easy prey. But they found me, my brother, my tribe. We broke their army at the fort of a thousand vigils, then pursued the Magister. Yeah, I can tell that it is the same voice as Zaid and um, the, uh, the, the, the Seneschal and whatnot. But he sounds like someone else because he's putting a bit of an accent on. And he sounds like someone else, like a character on a TV show or a celebrity or something. And I just can't quite get it. <laughs> Maybe somebody that I know in real life, to be fair. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so in the chat, the Welsh person is saying Scottish and the American is saying Welsh. <laughs> I don't know. It's. I think it sounds like he's trying to do Welsh, but maybe not quite managing it. Um, yeah, the thought of a thousand vigils, you mean vigils keep... Here we would sacrifice him to Yuvola, the god of this wood. As his guards fell one by one, he struck my brother and I with liquid fire. So even as the Magister's body was torn apart, my brother and I watched from stone eyes. I wasn't calling you American, common misconception. I was calling Timothy American. <laughs> Because Timothy said Welsh. Did you also say Welsh? If you also saw Welsh, then I missed that. Yes, you did also say Welsh. No, it wasn't. Uh, it was not directed at you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Common misconception. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and and Wel Welsh friend says definitely not Welsh. Because you see, to my ear, it it sounds. It doesn't sound Welsh. It sounds like somebody trying to do a Welsh accent. But then, if you actually are Welsh, it probably doesn't sound Welsh at all. Like when I watch episodes of Vera, and you've got. Lots of um, actors trying to do a Geordie accent. And I'm like, that's not even close to a Geordie accent. <laughs> and I don't know why they don't just get Geordie actors. Because there must be enough Geordie actors in the world. In fact, you know what? Just grab, just pull people in off the street, man. I would rather have a decent accent than have decent acting. Because to be fair, in Vera, the acting isn't that good anyway to begin with. <laughs> so I'm like, no, I just try, just grab anybody. <laughs> I would rather have somebody who can vaguely act and actually has a proper authentic accent than have like an actor with a shit Northumbrian accent. And I tell you what, the worst Geordie accent I have ever heard was in an episode of Doctor Who. I can't remember which one it was. It was one of Peter Capaldi's episodes. And she was, it was a woman and she was like a soldier. And they had her put on this like most, the, like the worst Geordie accent you've ever heard in your life. Like it was embarrassing. I was cringing even watching it. I was like, oh my God, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so not many people. Brenda Blethyn's Northumbrian accent is quite good, though, in uh, Vera. So if you don't know, Vera is a, um, it's a detective, well, it's a, I was going to say it's a detective show. It's a police drama um, set in Northumberland. And it's very exciting because it's all filmed in Northumberland. So, um, and it's been going for like 12 seasons, I think. And they film like around this time of year, like late summer, early autumn. And it's always very exciting this time of year for people who live in Northumberland because you can you you'll, you'll always see them filming in places like I've seen them filming a few times actually uh, a couple of months ago I think it was I went I was driving up the coast road with my mother which has gone for a drive for a day out um, and you know when you just get in the car and you just go for a drive and you don't really have like a destination in mind we were just like oh let's just go for a drive so we just went for a drive and we ended up going up the coast road and like went up the scenic route and we were going through this there's this little tiny village called boomer right on the coast right <laughs> and they had there was like traffic lights on um you know like when they're doing roadworks but there didn't seem to be any roadworks and we were like oh what's going on here and as we were going through the traffic lights we turned this corner and they had all the vans with like the um the uh, the filming equipment in and I was like oh my god they're filming Vera and it's always really exciting when you see them because then when you're watching Vera you have to kind of see the, the look for the bit that was filmed there in you know in the bit where you saw them and then you could be like I saw them filming that scene <laughs> and it's very exciting because I saw them filming in uh, Whitley Bay once 
Uh, and then I like as I was watching that series, I was like looking out for a bit where they were in Whitley Bay, and there they were in Whitley Bay, and I was like, oh my god, I saw them filming that. Bit. <laughs> And it's 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 a local pastime to to look for where they're filming Vera at any given <laughs> time. But honestly, it's it's really fun to watch when you live here because wherever they go, it's usually somewhere that you know. And in every episode, you're you're always like trying to see where they are. And then if it's somewhere that you go like a lot, like somewhere that you drive through every day, it's like super exciting because like you know it's like it's on the telly, but it's like I, I've been there, I've parked there, I've walked down that path. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's it's oh oh it's immense uh, excitement for the locals. <laughs> um, uh, 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 oh dear. Mm-hmm. Voice actor is Robin Sachs, who died in 2013. Yes, I am aware of that. Uh, also appeared in an episode of Star Trek Voyager. Did he indeed? I might have known that. Who was it? There was somebody I messaged you about, Fred, who appeared in an epi- in a, f- a few episodes of Star Trek, actually, because I recognised the voice. But now I can't remember who it was. Someone who's been in video games. Uh, there was a crime show Timothy watched set in Northumberland years ago. Well, there's Vera. There's Inspector George Gently. That one's set in Northumberland, but it's also set like in the 1960s. That's a good one as well. I can't immediately think of any others. Not crime shows anyway. There's Alvida Saint Pet. If you want to uh, really, really test your uh, Geordie accent skills, I believe... <laughs> I believe people outside of Northumberland often watch that one with uh, subtitles on because the accents are quite strong. Nothing else is immediately coming to mind that's set in Northumberland, but there's probably others. Uh... Uh... <laughs> he was General Valen. That does ring a bell, but I can't immediately remember who it is. YouTube's saying we've gone down to three viewers. Do you think that's YouTube being weird? Or do you think all of the tangents have finally driven some of them off? Because do you know what? If I, like, clicked on a Dragon Age live stream, expecting it to be a Dragon Age live stream, and there was just a tangent about a random Northumbrian crime show going on, to be fair, I would probably keep watching, but I can understand why some people wouldn't. Anyway. <laughs> um, tell me about your people. We know little of you now. I don't think Dora would be that interested. Is uh, Can I do anything for you? To Vinter Magister that cursed my brother and I. He leads a mockery of life. Disturb the ashes nearby. Summon him. Kill him. Free me. Stranger. No, come here. Yeah, okay, I'll talk to you in a minute. Um The Voyager episode was the Void. Yes, is that the one where they end up in that? bit of space where there's no stars or is it a different one uh... <laughs> uh... I think is that the one I'm trying to think now I'm trying, I'm trying to think what other ones it could be. Because I have... Because is, is that one not called The Night or something like that? Uh, hmm. Better to fight the demon than go the peaceful route. More experience items. Yeah. Well, more experience and items, not experience items. Um... Uh, Voyager slips into a pocket of subspace where many other ships are trapped and must steal from each other in order to survive. Only with the help of other starships can they all escape the void. Ah, yes. I vaguely remember that one, and I don't think it's the one where they're trapped in the bit of space with no stars.
Yeah, it's not one that I've watched a lot, but yes, I do I do vaguely know which one you're talking about. Um, anyway, <laughs> should we get on with Dragon Age? Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> Another talking statue. You'd look lovely in my throne room. Bit chatty, though. I mean, I don't think I'd want a talking statue in my throne room. Like, you know. You didn't want your statues talking your ear off, do you? Um, yeah, was your brother lying? I have never known him to speak a falsehood. But he is mistaken. My brother is consumed by rage. Over long years, his anger grows. Anger will Um, I have not heard of whatever show that is, Timothy. But the fact that uh, you mistook Yorkshire for Northumberland, I take as a personal slight, to be fair. <laughs> that would be like me saying, oh, I saw this show that was set in America, and then being like, oh, no, actually, it was Canada. <laughs> Which, to be fair, I probably would. <laughs> um... Uh... <laughs> uh... You can fight the Magister regardless. Yes, you can, can't you? But I don't think Dora would take the peaceful route, would she? Also, I'm not listening to this conversation at all. Because there's like 15 conversations going on in the chat and I'm too I'm too <laughs> preoccupied by them. Um, yeah, what will free you? There is no release. But with peace, serenity, we can sleep. I have slept many seasons with only my brother's anger to call me back. Show him the way. This does not have to be a torment. Yes, this is sort of like, you know, accept the things you cannot change kind of thing going on here, isn't it? Um, uh, he seems pretty intent on murdering the Magister. He is the son of the father, a warrior born. With the long seasons, I have seen that violence often accomplishes naught. Okay, um, I don't think Dora is the one to be teaching somebody that violence is not the way, to be honest. <laughs> I think you've picked the best person to try and demonstrate that violence is not the answer. I think, I think, uh, I think Dora is kind of like, eh, violence is the answer. <laughs> uh, well, you can talk to him again, though. The deed is not yet done. Uh... Your brother says the Magister's death won't free you? My brother has grown weak. In truth, weakness was always in him. He was a thinker, a dreamer, not a warrior. Uh, has anger helped you on you, miserable? Can't you forgive the Magister? In a thousand years, has no one killed the Magister? Twice before he has been struck down. Once very long ago. Once by an Alamari Dane. Um. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then even if I kill the Magister, you'll still be trapped. You. You may be right. My soul calls out to smite he who cursed my brother and me. Okay, I think I've accidentally gone the peaceful route. Like, I literally just wanted to chat with him and then I was just going to go, actually, you're right, I shall kill the Magister. We'll kill the Magister anyway, though. Um, <clears throat> oh no, I can say, if I kill him one more time, perhaps the cycle will end. Yes, do this thing. Okay. I mean, you know, it's not likely, but it's possible. Um, sorry, I'm just rearranging my desk. Right, okay. <laughs> Uh, right, we'll go and fight the Magister. Because, you know, if Dora can stab something, she's going to stab something. That's just the way she is. Uh, there we go. Ancient Magister. Uh, it's not often that Fred uh, encourages me to go down the violent route, you know. He's, he's usually, he usually wants me to be all, you know, happy and, and nice. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, put you in a bit of a corner. Cold! Think you can fireball us all to death, do you? Well, you might be right. Um. Uh, more like saying you were from Dallas, but really you were from Fort Worth. If you say so, Timothy. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I don't know. My US geography is not that great, I'll be honest. Uh, right, so. There we go. We got him down. He's dead. Yay! He had seven gold on him. Whoop de doo. Okay, we'll go back and talk to what's his name. Hello, what's his name? The Magister is dead. If I had blood, it would sing. Rest comes upon me, Savior. But look to the earth. The Dane. To be fair, maybe the death of the Magister is what he needs to calm his rage, to let him sleep. You know, maybe that's his kind of serenity. And, you know, it just so happens that it has to be done every few centuries. Um, yeah, we've got Dane's tribute. Hello, statue. Statue looks ancient, but it has weathered the as well. He doesn't want to talk to me. What about this one? Yeah. Okay, so that yeah, because they've both gone back to sleep. So, you know, it's kind of the same outcome, really. It's just, it won't last. But it might not have lasted anyway if we'd gone down the peaceful route. He might still have, you know, woken up in a couple of hundred years' time and gone, you know what, I really want that Magister dead. Um, right. Can you imagine being turned to stone, but you were still conscious? Oh, my God. That's a terrible thought, isn't it? Especially, like, if you're also kind of made immortal in the process. That's, a, that's, that's kind of a horrible thought, isn't it? Uh, right, so... <laughs> Read in the chat. Uh, yes, I learned where all the US states were as well. That was kind of what I did during um, lockdown. Not just US, but like... I was. There's a website where you can do geography quizzes. I can't remember what it's called, but it sort of like teaches you where you can choose. I was doing... Uh, English counties, because embarrassingly, I didn't know most of them. I mean, I knew we, I knew them like they all existed, but I didn't really know where they all were. I was all right with the northern ones, but once you get into the south, I'm like, I don't know where anything is in the south. Um, <laughs> um, I did US states. I did countries in Europe. I did countries in Africa. Those were like the main ones I did. I, 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 I sort of did countries in Asia as well a little bit, you know, trying to like improve my geography. I don't know how well I can remember the US states, though. I mean, I could name you them all, but as for, like, where they are and stuff like that... I think I'd do all right now, but I don't think I'd get all of them. Um, yeah, so... Hello, Mr. Tree. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to paralyse you there, but you... Dora is not Anders. Anders is Anders, and Anders can paralyse people. Oh, you're a fan of Pointless, are you, Welsh friend? I used to watch Pointless when I still lived at home because my mother watched it and we always, we always used to watch Pointless. But uh, I haven't watched it in years. Do they still make new episodes of Pointless or is it just uh, reruns? That's the ancient silver wood that we need. Uh... Uh, we used to watch Pointless and then Eggheads. Because it was Pointless on first and then Eggheads, or was it the other way around? I can't remember now. On BBC One. Or it might have been BBC Two. I can't remember. That's what we used to watch. And then there was something else. There was like a whole load of shows that we used to watch. Like it was like when I got in from school. And then like she'd be making tea. And then we'd have with tea and it would be... I'm sure it was like Eggheads and then Pointless. And then it would be something. But I can't think. Uh, anyway. <laughs> oh my god. I don't really watch telly now though. Now that I live on my own. There's so many things I don't watch anymore. Like, I don't watch Strictly anymore. I used to love Strictly. But then it's like, it's. I think it's one of those things you need to watch with someone. And when you're living on your own. I mean, also, the fact that I go to bed at stupid o'clock now. Because I have to be up at three o'clock in the morning. 
you know, doesn't lend itself. And Strictly is something that needs to be watched live. I don't think it, it's quite as good if you go back and watch it. But yeah. Um, anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm reading the chat again. We're having a good chat tonight, aren't we? We're having a good catch up, aren't we? <laughs> uh, it's a social thing yeah there are some shows that like you have to watch with someone and like you know quiz shows are definitely the one because you can argue about what the answers are it's like, pointless is a good one though uh, I was never big on quiz shows but like uh, po pointless is a good one um, but yeah it's, it's not the same when you watch it on your own really so I don't really watch it in movie. Uh, yeah, I kind of sometimes I miss watching Strictly. Although I st I sort of stopped watching Strictly because I like the show, but I don't like all of the stuff that goes on around it. It's become too much of a reality show. Do you know what I mean? Where people are like you know gossiping about the celebrities and if they're having affairs with each other and stuff like that. And if you if you like go on if you're anywhere close, I mean I'm not on social media at all now. But if you even like so much as just look up a video of one of the dancers on YouTube or something like that and briefly scroll down into the comments you just see all of like the all of just the horrible social media side of, of stuff that goes on and like i just i just kind of be dealing with all of that crap like you know it's become it's become too much like a reality show i think um uh, I, I did used to love a bit of strictly and we used to watch it takes two as well the strictly sister show that was another thing that was on it, it, i'm sure it was like was it eggheads and then pointless and then it takes two I can't remember. And Downton Abbey always used to be on in the autumn as well back then when I was still in school and stuff like that. So on the Saturday, it was like... No, because It Takes Two was on through the week, wasn't it? So through the week, it would be Eggheads, then Pointless, then It Takes Two. And then on a Saturday, it would be like Strictly. And then it was usually Doctor Who or sometimes Merlin when Merlin was still on. Um... And then on the Sunday, it was like Strictly Results Show and Downton Abbey. And then when Downton Abbey finished, it was uh, Call the Midwife. <laughs> I still watch Call the Midwife. That's the only one that I still watch. Um, yeah, I don't really watch a lot of like telly telly now. I mostly just watch like Netflix or Disney Plus and stuff like that. There isn't much on the actual telly that I like to watch. Uh, can we be asked doing the Stone Circle? We might come back and do it later. I can't be asked doing it now. Uh, right. So, we're already, like, not getting through this fast enough. It's been two hours and 13 minutes, guys. <laughs> um, Uh, not on any social media apart from YouTube and WhatsApp yet. Yeah, me too. I have a Twitter account, which I use to follow certain accounts just to, like, try and keep up. Because I'm so bad at keeping up with, like, current news. And when it, when, when, like, current affairs and stuff like that, I'm not that interested. Like, if it's something that you really need to know about, you'll find out about it whether you watch the news or not. I have learned that, so I don't watch the news. Um, but, like, so, but like, uh, like, like, you know, news about the video game industry and stuff like that. I am so bad at just keeping up with stuff um or like you know what films are coming out that kind of stuff i just i don't hear about anything and people say like in the in the modern age it's almost impossible to avoid spoilers and stuff like that and i'm like i i find it almost impossible to find spoilers you know i just i'm just i'm just constantly really <laughs> out of touch with the world you know so i do have a twitter account but i don't tweet and I don't really go on it, like I don't go on Twitter to look at tweets. I just kind of like um, have they they just pop up on my phone now and then, and it's it's usually stuff about either video games or Disney films or stuff like that, and just like you know what's coming out. 
just so I can try and keep on top of things. Uh, but even then, I'm I'm still really terrible at like keeping up with current. Like, dra you know what? Dragon Age Four could come out tomorrow, when I probably wouldn't have heard about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm just I'm just terrible at um, keeping up with stuff like that. But uh, so I do have a Twitter account, but I don't tweet, and I don't go on Twitter. Plus, I find. Do you know what? I had I had a Twitter account years ago when I was a teenager, and I came off it because it was too addictive. Right, and then I went back on it, just like a couple of years ago, maybe. Again, just to like you know, keep up with relevant news and stuff like that with video games and things. And I was worried that it was going to become addictive. I found the absolute opposite. I found it was actually really boring, and I just I I don't I don't ever want to go on it just to look at it. You know what I mean? I only read the tweets that actually pop up on my phone as like a notification. I don't uh, I don't like go on Twitter to look at tweets because I just find it really boring. And it's like, has it changed? Or have I changed? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a combination of the two. But yeah, I find social media is just really dull. I mean, people say it's addictive and I used to find it addictive. But now I just I just think it's just mind numbing. <laughs> I, just, I don't understand how it takes up so much of people's time. Um, uh... Mm -hmm. uh, talking about Reddit. Yeah, I used to do Reddit. I still sometimes nip on Reddit. Uh... Trouble with Reddit is I would always get sucked into the, um, the subreddits that I don't actually want to be on. You know, like the really popular ones. Because even when you just go on to check the ones that you're actually following, like the Dragon Age one and the Mass Effect one and stuff like that, it'll always, it'll always, it'll always pop up articles from like the popular ones, and you always just end up clicking on them, even though you know that you you know that you don't want to, um, and then you kind of get drawn into other people's dramas that you don't want to be drawn into, and you're like, why did I click on that? Um, so yeah, but I tell you what, the Dragon Age subreddit does a. Um, fan fiction writing prompt thing every Saturday. I used to love doing that. I can't really do it now because I work on Saturdays. Um, but uh, I, I used to really enjoy doing that. You know, if you happen to be into writing Dragon Age fan fiction, I would, I would, you know, recommend popping in and having a look if nothing else. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. Just talking about social media now. I do sometimes think that I should have something, like some other social media thing for the channel, just in case something happens and the channel gets kind of, you know, cancelled by YouTube. Because YouTube's a bit weird and they can do that sometimes, can't they? Where they just kind of go, do you know what? Your channel's shit. We're going to just cancel it. Um... <laughs> Because I've got no other way of... I, I mean, I can I can message Fred in other ways, but I've got no other way of, like, communicating with the rest of you. Um, so I do keep thinking maybe I should have something. But then there's nothing I want. I don't, I don't want to tweet on Twitter. I don't want Instagram. I don't want Facebook. Like, I don't know. Unless we have, like, a Discord or something. We could have a Discord. We could have a Magpie Discord, couldn't we? Although I find Discord a bit scary. I've never, like, properly learned all the rules of Discord. I... I <laughs> I have a Discord account, and I'm on a few groups of Discord, but it, it's it's a bit intimidating. I feel like it's it's for some kind of like you know, social media experts or something like that. <laughs> right, should we go talk to this botanist? Hello, Mrs. Botanist woman. You're standing in my dirt. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> in the chat, don't mind me. Uh, right, okay, I, I'm standing in your dirt. Okay, uh, is that a problem? <laughs> no, of course not. I'm just scowling at you because I'm a cantankerous old lady. That dirt was specially prepared for my plants. I only have to find the seeds now. It's just a matter of time, I'm sure. Uh, okay. You braved the winding wood for a plant. Not just any plant. A northern prickleweed. Very rare. 
and rumored to be able to grow on blighted land, I'd say that's worth the risk. Besides, I can look after myself. The dark spawn, whatever they're doing, seem to concentrate their efforts off over there. And so far, I've managed to stay away from the crazy Dalish girl. She seems more interested in the caravans anyway. Uh, okay, so yes, you're the uh, the botanist that Wynn told me to find. You've heard of me then? Read one of my books, have you? Uh, no, I'm not really the reading time. <laughs> Wynn told me to find you. Wynn? What now? She's not going to try to get me to teach slack-jawed apprentices again, is she? She used to pester Aldred about his duty to the apprentices when he just wanted to be left alone. No wonder he went crazy and tried to kill everyone. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah. The College of. Uh, yeah. She said the College of Maid Magi needed a voice of reason. Let's compliment her. And she told you to find me? Huh. She must be clutching at straws. Hmm. It's been some time since the college was called together. Why now? No, I can't go. Not yet. I'm not leaving till I get the seeds of the northern prickleweed. I've been here too long just to give up. Uh, okay, if I find the seeds, will you go to Cumberland? Hmm, I suppose another pair of eyes wouldn't hurt. And if you actually succeed, I'm sure I could scrounge up some kind of reward. You're looking for the seeds of a northern prickleweed. The plant has broad, dark green leaves with thorny stems and is most commonly found growing on rocky ground. Go on now. If I'm going to be travelling, I'll need to make preparations. Okay. This is the lady that wants pricks, says Fred. I have a joke. Do you want to hear my joke? Do you want to hear my joke about pricks? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to remember it now. I'm so bad at telling jokes. <laughs> I'm really bad at it. Okay. <laughs> Especially since I usually descend into hysterical laughter before I actually, you know, give the punchline. <laughs> Oh, I wish I hadn't said anything now. I'm so bad at telling jokes. <laughs> right, so there was a little girl, right? And she pricked her finger on a thistle. And she ran indoors to her mother and she said, Mammy, I've, I've pricked my finger. Can I have a glass of cider? And her mother looks at her and says, What do you want a glass of cider for? And she says, Well, I heard my sister the other day. And she said that whenever she has a prick in her hand, she just wants to get it inside her. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, right? <laughs> My uh, my driving instructor told me that one. It was about the only decent joke he ever told me because he used to just tell me dad jokes all the time when I was driving to try and like you know, well not to try and distract me but but to you know see if I could you know <laughs> manage the roundabouts and stuff like that while he was talking about other things. And his favourite thing was just to tell me dad jokes all the time and that was like that one was decent. That's about the only one I remember actually. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good joke, right? Yeah, that was a good joke. Um, uh, name for the a Discord, the College of Magpie. That would be really good, wouldn't it? Uh, <laughs> oh, that was quite a good joke. There was another one he told me about a nun. That was quite a dirty one as well. I can't remember what that was. Oh yes, there's, yes. There's a nun in the bath. You've probably heard this one. I think this is quite a common one. There's a nun in in the bath, right? And uh, <laughs> a man knocks on the door, and she says, "Who is it?" And he says, "It's the blind man." And she thinks, "Oh, that's probably all right then. Uh, if he's blind, that's fine." <clears throat> so she says, "Come in." She says, come in, and he comes in, and <laughs> he says, nice tits, love, where do you want the blind? <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I think those were the only dirty jokes he told me. I don't think he told me many of the other, many others. Um, most of them were just like stupid things like, what do you call a man with a shovel on his head? Doug. <laughs> Stuff like that, you know. Um, uh, who am I looking for? Anders, that's who I'm looking for. I'm looking for Morrigan, that's what I'm doing. I keep I keep looking for Morrigan and like, she's not there. She abandoned me, guys. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Uh, my brother was always a good one for telling nun jokes. He had a lot of dirty nun jokes. Um, I can't remember any of them off the top of my head, though. Uh, oh, that's the old one. Are you like, you know, a special tree or something? Well, I'm going to paralyze you just the same, except you, you, you trapped me in roots first. So, you know, well done, I suppose. Um, there we go. Okay, can I paralyze you now? Will you allow that, Mr. Tree? Uh, you've resisted my paralyze, man. I hate it when people do that. It's just rude, isn't it? Just rude. Um. Where'd you find a dog with no legs? Right where you left it. <laughs> that was my favourite joke when I was a kid. I think my dad told me that joke. Probably that is a dad joke, isn't it? Um, that was like my that was like my favourite. Like when I was like seven or eight years old, that was just my favourite joke. I would go around the playground telling everybody that joke. I thought it was just hysterical. <laughs> I thought it was like the cleverest thing I'd ever heard in my life. Where'd you find a dog with no legs? Right where you left him. Um, <laughs> Oh, this is this is a good one. This was another favourite of mine. <clears throat> <clears throat> what did the river say the first time it saw a beaver? I'll be damned. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, right? I think that's good. Okay, I'm going to take a quick break. Um, uh, 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 that was the wrong thing. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Where's me, Hoojit? Yeah, that's the one I want. Uh, right, yes, I'm going to take a quick break. Uh, and then I'll be back. Yes, that, yes, that is the gist of what I wanted to say.
When I said I wanted to be a comedian, they laughed. Well, they're not laughing now. <laughs> That's one of my favourite jokes as well. That's uh, Bob Monkhouse, isn't it? I think. I think that's Bob Monkhouse. Um, that's a good joke. Right, that's a good joke. Uh, I've just checked my phone and my mother's rung me and I'm trying to decide whether I need to ring her back or not. But she hasn't messaged me. So it probably wasn't important. It can probably wait until after the stream. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um although i think we were we were we were talking about maybe going to the uh remembrance day thing tomorrow with the cenotaph so uh it was probably something to do with that that's our local cenotaph not the cenotaph in london although i did once go to the uh the remembrance day parade in london because my brother had taken me down to london to see wicked for my birthday and i think it was it was either my 13th or my 14th birthday it was something like that and uh, he took me down to London to see Wicked. And uh, it happened to fall on Remembrance Day weekend. So we'd flown down on the Saturday morning, seen Wicked on the Saturday night, stayed overnight, and then we were flying back on the Sunday afternoon. And the Remembrance Day parade was on, so we went to see the Remembrance Day parade. And honestly, I remember nothing about Wicked. I remember everything about the Remembrance Day parade. <laughs> because I love the Remembrance Day parade. But back then was when the Queen was still used to lay the wreath. Because over the last few years, should uh, Charles had been doing it and the Queen was just on the balcony and it was never quite the same. But back then was when she still laid the wreath. And uh, I don't know if there's more security now than there was back then, but I don't remember there being much in the way of security except, like, the odd police officer. But, like, we were so close. We were, like, we were right at the front and we were, like, side on to the Queen and I mean, we were as close as you could get. And I mean, she was so close. She was just there. Like, she was so close. And I remember looking at her and being like, oh my God, that's the queen. And she's just like, there. I mean, I'd seen her before, because we used to live near Balmoral. And when whenever the, they were in residence at Balmoral, um, I think there was only once. You can, you can like go, there's like a little car park and you can go, because there's, there's a church that they drive to. It's like just opposite the road from Balmoral and they go to like church services there. So they drive like from the house to Balmoral. Uh, no, from Balmoral to the church. And like you can stand there and watch them drive past, right? <laughs> so we'd done that once. So I had seen it and I remember being quite underwhelmed because I was just sort of like, we drove here, we got up at stupid o'clock in the morning and drove here and stood here to watch <laughs> the royal family being driven. <laughs> Like, you know, I, th I think they were actually in the church and we only watched them being driven back, I think. And I remember it, it just felt a bit weird. It, it just like, I feel like a stalker or something like that, that I got up this early to, <laughs> to come and watch, you know. I mean, all right, it's the Queen, but, you know, to just watch a person being driven from a church to her house. Um, <laughs> it felt a bit weird. But that was like, so I, I remember that being a bit kind of, oh, it was just a bit weird. It was just kind of, yeah, I've seen the Queen, but it just feels a bit weird. But like that, when I saw her at the Remembrance Day Parade, I was like, that's the Queen. That's the queen. Like, she's just there. She was like, I don't know how far away she'd have been. I mean, I might be remembering it a bit wrong. You know how you remember things skewed? She might not have been as close as I was remembering, but you can get very close. Um, Because if you can see when you watch it on the telly, you can see that they are allowed quite close. Um, But I know we were right at the front and I was just like, it's, it's the queen. And it was just one of those things. I was like, it's the queen. And then I'm like, of course, all the other royals are behind her. You know, I think Princess Anne's always there and William. 
And back then, Harry used to be there as well, although he's not now. Um, and Andrew and all of them. Edward, that's the one I'm missing. Um, <laughs> I knew I was missing one. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and, and it was just like, but I, I didn't, it was like I didn't even notice the rest of the royals. I was just like, it's the Queen. I remember just being mesmerised. I was like, it's the Queen. <laughs> Um, but yeah, but it's, it's so weird because like I remember nothing about Wicked, but I I remember the Remembrance Day parade. It was very strange, and that 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 cannon when that cannon fires, you do not realize how loud that cannon is when you're watching it on telly. When you are next to that cannon, I've to this day I don't think I've ever heard anything as loud as that cannon because the whole point of the cannon is that you're supposed to be able to hear it like across all of London which is not the case now because London is significantly bigger than it used to be, but it's still pretty fucking loud, that cannon. <laughs> and the Queen stands right bloody next to it. Wait, she used to, she doesn't now, obviously. But I, and, and like, like she didn't, not even a flicker on her face when that cannon went off. And I remember being like, <laughs> how, do you, how do you remain so composed when you're right next to a cannon that fucking loud? Never heard anything that loud in my, you know, you, you, you know when you hear something in your chest, you feel it in your chest. And you actually think, I wonder if this noise has the ability to make my heart stop. Because you feel it vibrate right through your chest. That, like, it was fucking terrifying. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh my god, that's another tangent. This is this stream's more tangent than the last one, blame me. Right. Okay, let's put the game back on. Right, so, you know, the game, anybody remember the game? Um, uh, right, how did we even talk? start talking about the Queen? I don't know. Um, <laughs> where am I going? What am I doing? I don't know. I don't know. There's a Darkspawn camp over there. Have I already cleared that out? I think I have. That's a bandit camp. Why am I here? Like, why did I come over this side of the map? What have I achieved? I need Valana to appear again. I think I need to head over the other side get her to appear. <laughs> Why am I here? My asks. That's another one for the uh, slogans, Fred. Write that down. <laughs> the magpie mug slogans. Why am I here? <laughs> what am I doing? Right. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, it's just British people's nature to start talking about the Queen, maybe. I still forget that she's dead, you know. It's weird. I, 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 I kind of have to remind myself. Because it doesn't feel like she is, does it? It's odd. Um, there's the prickle weed. Well, we can ha head straight back to what's our face and give her some prickle weed. <laughs> uh, uh, dee -dee -dee. Where is she? She's somewhere around here, isn't she? That gra it really annoys me that that granite deposit carries on popping up even after you've clicked on it. Because then, you know, I don't have a clear tab thing. Where the hell is she? She was somewhere. She was definitely somewhere, right? Did I imagine her? She was somewhere. I think she was up there, maybe. I don't know. I'm wandering aimlessly. Don't you want to do the stone puzzle? Asks Daniel. Daniel, we'll, we'll be here until flipping Easter. <laughs> I might come back and do the stone puzzle. There she is. But, uh, I mean, if somebody wants to Google it and then talk me through it, we could do it that way. Any luck? Did you find any northern prickleweed? Uh, yes, there's your seeds. Marvellous. Look at them. Oh, magnificent. Such a smooth seed coat. Like onyx. You are a worker of miracles. Here. I whipped yeah. up some herbal remedies so for you, and a list of instructions so you can recreate them if you like. And now it's time for me to leave. Perhaps our paths will cross again at a later date. Good luck. She's not dead. They turned her into a fighter plane. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> uh, I like to think that it's like King Arthur, because he's not supposed to be dead. He's meant to be asleep in a cave in Cornwall. And I believe... That there is like an actual cave that is supposed to be the cave where he's asleep with all of his uh, knights of the round table. And uh, that's why he's the once and future king, because the idea is that at some point he will awaken and return to unite the land of Albion and all of that kind of stuff. 
He's not. He's not dead. He's just asleep in a cave in Cornwall. <laughs> um, Merlin's not dead either. He's trapped in a tree. Nimue trapped him in a tree. So apparently he's the yeah. Neither of them are dead. Arthur's asleep in a cave and Merlin's trapped in a tree. Apparently. So so the legend has it. I like to think that's the same for the queen. She's just like you know she's not dead. She's just asleep somewhere. Like she'll come, she'll pop up at some point. You know. <laughs> <laughs> some point she'll just kind of turn up and fix the mess you know uh right so <clears throat> uh, right so i'm heading over this side aren't i there's gonna be trees attacking me you're gonna attack me tree tree Hello, tree. You don't want to attack me. Tree is not interested in attacking me. That's rubbish, isn't it? Uh, oh, there's a tree that wants to attack me. Naturally, you're not one of the ones that gives me the ancient sylvan wood that I need, though. So you know, you're a bit rubbish, really. I'm gonna hoy a grenade at you to show my disapproval. Fred, I'm not even rising to that comment. <laughs> um, you, you, you know, you're getting into dangerous territory, Fred. Uh, right, so... Uh, sorry, I thought there was a cat by my feet there, but there wasn't. Um... I know you didn't mention the vegetable that shall not be named, Fred, but you've, you're, you're, you're skirting around the topic. <laughs> to be fair, it was actually common misconception that mentioned the vegetable that should not be named. <laughs> um, um, oh dear. That's lovely, isn't it? It's delightful, that. Ew. Uh, right. All right, all right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, more Sylvans. a blight wolf over there. We're about to upset Fred by killing a blight wolf. <laughs> yeah, it's what he deserves for that. Uh, Swedish comment. Right, okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if we put a bit of a cone of cold on the old blight wolves and we also froze Dora. Oh, she's gonna, she's gonna be not happy. You imagine the moment that Anders lets off a cone of cold and accidentally freezes Dora and he's just like, oh my god. <laughs> There's gonna be hell to pay. <laughs> uh, The redacted vegetable reference was before my time, says Security Ostrich. Well, this is the basics of it, Security Ostrich. There is a vegetable called a turnip, and there is a vegetable called a swede. And a lot of people think they are the same thing, and they are not the same thing, and it annoys me. That's that. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and they, they call it something different in America, but Fred was saying that they, they call swedes turnips, which they don't, but he was trying to tell me that they do, and there was nearly a war. That's, that's kind of what happened. There was <laughs> relations soured for a while. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so. Take out these wolves. Um... <laughs> Security ostrich has never heard of a Swede being a food. 
Uh, you're Canadian, aren't you, Security Ostrich? I think. I, I've sometimes, you know, there's so many of you now, I sometimes get you mi mixed up. Yeah, it's sweet. It's like a turnip, but bigger. And it's a different colour. And it tastes different. <laughs> so it's not like a turnip, but we can still call it a turnip. Um, uh, <laughs> we're opening up we're opening up the uh, the argument again. <laughs> uh hi okay so there's an empty chest lovely I get that sometimes in dragon age and i always wonder whether it was deliberate or not uh ancient sylvan which will drop ancient silver wood that we need for somebody i can't remember who we definitely need it for somebody though uh right so that's a corpse pile that we've been to. That's a makeshift lead. I think you have to like explore everywhere, don't you? And then when you go back, the land is waiting for you. I think that's what happens. But I can't remember. Uh... <laughs> Common misconception confusing things even more in the chat. <laughs> Swedish turnip. Maybe it is. Do they originate in, in um, Sweden? <laughs> yeah, I know they said Swedland. <laughs> it's not Sweden anymore, it's Swedland. <laughs> um, uh, uh, <laughs> yes, I, I mean, I will admit it, it's like similar to a turnip, but at the same time, it's not a turnip. Um, uh, I mean, a leek is similar to an onion, but it's not. I mean, they're from the same family. Family. It's basically an onion, but it's not. You wouldn't call a leek an onion, would you? Calling a, a swede a turnip is like calling a leek an onion. It's like, well, technically, yeah, but at the same time, no. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, and there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Sorry, read the chat. Oh, my inventory's a bit full. Dear me. Uh, I think I've got gifts to give people, haven't I? Got a discarded journal. Soap on a rope. Oh my god, we've got Delia House letters. Potted plug off. Uh, dear. Yes. Okay, we'll deal with that in a second. Um, I forgot to sell me stuff when I was at the uh, keep as well. Uh, oh, Militia Survivor. Hello, Militia Survivor. Strange name, but you know, we won't judge. Don't look at me. Okay, who are you? Olaf, my name. Came with friends to, to drive out away the elf. But the dark spawn were too quick. We were ripped apart, biting claws and teeth from the darkness, and then I woke, flesh and bone and gristle under me, around me, everyone dead, dead, soft meat melting into the ground. I, I crawled away, came here, can't stand to see it. Is the stream buffering for any of you? Because I've got an error popped up saying YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Um, I'm hoping it'll pass, because it usually does. But if the stream's been a bit funny, that might be why. Um, we'll give it a few minutes, and if it hasn't sorted itself out, I'll have a look. Um, <clears throat> okay, where did the dark spawn come from? Beneath, around, from shadow. Okay, yeah, he's got the uh, dog spawn taint and it's starting to drive him a bit loopy. Uh, did you kill the elves? No. No. Dark spawn came first. They slaughtered us, took our steel, brought it to the elven camp, tricked us, tricked the elf. Now, she thinks we are to blame. 
hunts all in her rage while they watch. So all these people died over a misunderstanding? Baker, that's horrible. We have to stop her. Tell her she's wrong. Do you think she's back at her camp? We could try looking for her there. The Dark Ones are curious about you, too. They watch you as well as her. Can you feel them? Yeah. Uh, do you know anything about the elf sister? Sister? I have a sister. Do I? Elf sister? No. We did not take her. Probably dead. Or eaten. Okay, this disease will kill you, you know. I'm already dead. I'm already gone. Make, make an end. Please. Uh, okay, as you wish, my friend. I mean, we could make him a Grey Warden, but... It might be too far gone for that. Weird that it's not an option, though. Uh, yeah, and here come the dark spawn. And then menacing little dogs spawn faces. Oh dear. Right, okay, so who have we got? We've got an emissary. Everybody attack the emissary. For he is the main threat. Uh, should be able to get him down quick enough. Yeah, we get him down nice and quick. Ambers is looking a bit dead. That is not good. Uh, take a health bolt, Ambers. Need to keep you alive. Uh, yeah. Get the emissary down nice and quick. Right, and now we can deal with everybody else. Right, Ogryn, you take a health bolus. And... If we maybe... Ow! That hurt. Probably. I mean, you know, I didn't feel it personally. But it looks like it hurt. Uh, yeah, and then we've got the two big guys down and everybody else should be fine. So... Where's Anders? Uh, I'm going to let you freeze that guy. And then I'm going to let you heal Ogryn up a little bit. Uh, somebody leveled up. Welsh friends pantomime coming out. Uh, it is the season! Be pantomimes in the theatre soon. I really want to see a pantomime. I've said that for the last few years that I want to go and see a pantomime. But I would feel weird going alone. Like when I go to the theatre, I usually go alone. Um, because I don't think it's really a social thing going to the theatre. I was talking to my friend actually because I, I usually go to the theatre alone and I usually go to the cinema alone. Sometimes I'll go with a friend if a friend asks me. But like if I want to go and see something, I'll just go and see something on my own. And she was like, "Oh God, I, I'd never be brave enough to go on my own." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> Uh, I find it much scarier to go like with people to things than to go on my own. Like I'm much more comfortable on my own. I'm weird like that. I've always been like more confident on my own um, than with someone. Uh, we'll give him that. Uh, but I would feel weird going to a pantomime on, on my own because you know it's for kids and stuff like that. And not that adults can't enjoy pantomimes as well, but you know, I'd feel out of place, wouldn't you? I'd rather go with someone so you at least got a bit of an ally. Trouble with that is, though, that you have to, like, coordinate when you're going with someone to something. You have to, you know, find a time that's best suited to both of you and all that kind of shit. And then you have to, you know, work out how you're getting there and stuff. That's why I prefer going to things on my own. <laughs> it's just easier. <laughs> Less stress. Um, uh, I can't remember what's on at the Theatre Royal this year. I can't remember which one they're doing. There's theatre in Hexham, and I noticed when we were in Hexham. They're doing Snow White this year. Oh, bloody spiders, man. Jesus. Uh. I really hate the spiders in the Origins. I just think they're too tanky. They, they, they can overwhelm you, they can poison you, they can web you. They just they piss me off, man. They're annoying. 
Uh, of course, they're nothing compared to the giant, 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 giant spider that you uh, fight in Dragon Age 2. That spider, Jesus fucking Christ. It's a spider the size of a fucking dragon. Crest almighty. <laughs> um, uh, right. So, ooh, any more? Oh, we're done, we're done. Yay, did somebody die there? No. Good. Um, it's just I'm not paying that much attention. Talking about pantomimes and stuff. Love good pantomime. We used to go every year when I was a kid. Oh, my entry's full. I remember going to see Cinderella. That was a good one. Um, and I remember... I can't remember if it was Peter Pan or Jack and the Beanstalk. I know we saw both Peter Pan and Jack and the Beanstalk, but I can't remember which one it was, where Denise Welsh played the male main character. So she, she either played Peter Pan or she played Jack. I think she played Jack in Jack and the Beanstalk. I think. But I can't remember. I know it was a really good one when Denise Welsh played the, uh, the boy. And then, uh, what's his name? I always forget his name. John Inman played um, Widow Twanky. And every time he came on the stage, he would go, I'm free. You know, like the line from Are You Being Served? But obviously when I was a kid, I didn't know that it was his line from Are You Being Served? So it was one of those things that all the adults found funny, but uh, the kids didn't get it. But, well, we still found it funny because we were kids. But, you know. Um, and then I saw, I remember Aladdin one year as well. Uh, I can't remember what other ones we saw. Those were the ones that stick in my head. There was Peter Pan, there was Aladdin. Cinderella. Jack and the Beanstalk. Those are the ones I remember. Um... Uh, just talking it just talking about you know childhood part of my memories right uh would you like your sister's letters oh, I've always wanted one of these <laughs> it's an odd response to your sister's letters but okay uh, and what about the how bow is this what I think it is it is that's the how crest burned into the wood right there this is my grandfather's bow or rather, my grandfather was the last to use it. It was originally made for an ancestor during the exalted marches. Fred is trying to tell people that in Sweden they make meatballs out of spiders. Is that true? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't, that's one of those things. I'm like, I don't know whether that's like a weird fact or if I've missed a joke. <laughs> Uh, I make homemade meatballs, you know. Yeah, I do. I make homemade meatballs. Go me. Much better than the shit you buy in the shops. Uh, um, yes. Why wasn't it used afterwards? Well, my father hid it away, I guess. I'm surprised he didn't simply have it destroyed. I remember finding it before father sent me to the free marches. A shame for it to sit in storage. Thank you. It's good to have a part of my family's legacy again. Something to be proud of. Ooh, Nathaniel approves plus 14. Ash ring is good, says Fred. Equip it. I don't have the ash ring. Uh, or unless it was one of the things that I haven't picked up. I've still got Tingler. <laughs> plus 4 constitution. Um, I can give that to somebody. Everybody's all ringed up, aren't they? Uh, plus 10 to spell power. Mm. I think, actually, if we get rid of those two. Uh, oh, fuck off, man. Uh, and give Anders those two. Because <coughs> they're better. And then Ring of Faith is just fire damage. That's shit. We'll just destroy that. Sleeper, it, yeah, that's kind of shit too. We'll just destroy that. Just destroy it. Destroy it. I thought it says destroy and not drop. You actually destroy it. And see if we've got any more. Bell collar. That'll be for Anders, won't it? Because it'll be for uh, a slot. Ooh, for me. Yeah. Ooh. Knitted scarf, I think, is for Anders. But I'm going to wait until the chat tells me I'm right about this. Hmm. Uh... Mm 
Uh, crab is an utterly horrifying monster if you see it up close. I've held crabs. We used to go rock pooling when I was little. I've held crabs. They're quite cute. Quite like a crab, actually. I think they're quite cute. They do have scary pincers, though. Um, <laughs> um, uh, soap and a rope is for Sigrun, isn't it? Discarded journal. And this old journal, Elf Who Lived in Amaranthi. Yeah, that's for Valana. Elf and Prayer for the Dead is for Valana. I think a Knitted Scarf is for Anders. Blank Journal is for Valana. Potted Plant, I think, is for Sigrun, I think. The Single Malt will be for Ogryn. Have some Single Malt. That looks fine indeed. Gold Earring. Is that for Anders or is that a generic one? I don't know. Uh, Brandy will be for Ogryn. That looks fine indeed. Gold Earring, I'm guessing, is for Anders because he wears earrings. Um, and the elven trinket is for uh, yes, mm -hmm, for Lana. I'm going to give Anders the gold earring. Have yeah, that's for him. I'll take a point on the knitted scarf. Nobody said anything about the knitted scarf in the chat. You're letting me down, guys. The bronze sextant. I can't remember. My instinct says Sigrun, but then I might be wrong about that. I am going to give Anders the knitted scarf. Yay, that was for Anders. Okay, that's cleared up my inventory enough, I think, for now. Uh, there we go, that's the ash ring. Uh, fire resistance and fire damage, it's not that good. <laughs> I think what Anders has got on at the minute is better. Yeah, that's much better. Uh, <laughs> Sexton is for Sigrun, is it? Because there's something that I always think should be for Sigrun and then it's not. And it always catches me out every time. I can't remember what it is. Might be the knit scarf, actually. Because she likes sort of... Um, yeah, we, you know, kind of novelty things from the surface. She's a bit of a kind of aerial sort of... You know, aerial from The Little Mermaid, how she just likes weird things from the surface. Yeah, Sigrun's like that. Um... Okay, so, no, that's the wrong thing. I want my journal. Uh, we've got the silver wood. We've got the silk. We've got all of the monuments. And then we just need to stop the caravan attacks. Okay, we're doing good, guys. I mean, you know, if we hadn't had all the tangents, we would have been finished all of this in an hour. But <laughs> what fun would that have been? Yeah, that Sylvan still doesn't want to attack me. Oh, they're about to attack me. Still here. I told you to stay away from me. I warned you. This place is not for you. Okay, Vilana. Chill out. Okay. Uh, the humans did not kidnap your sister. I know a human crime when I see it. I've experienced more than enough of them. You will pay for repeating their lies. Chill out, love. Relax. Breathe. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Okay. Just make the trees come alive instead. That's all right. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Remember, there is a workaround to avoid the hit to Ogryn's friendship when recruiting Galana. Is that to take him out of the party? Is that what you said? Do I need to take him out of the party? Because I might just decide I can't be asked to be fair. <laughs> um, right. Oh, we, we froze that dog while he was lying down. Fred's gonna hate us. Also, Nathaniel is not looking healthy. Okay, um, Anders, if you can heal Nathaniel. And then do a group heal. There's still a Sylvan. I thought we'd got both the Sylvans. Apparently we didn't. Um, okay. Okay. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, that's a lot of wolves. We might die. Uh, wolves are quite terrifying. Um, okay. Get the tree down. Right. The tree is down. The tree is down. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Ah, 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 I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Okay, okay, okay. Breathe, relax. Everything's fine. Do a acid flask. It's just walls are actually quite terrifying. Um, you're going to take a health bolus. Is it in your tactics to take a health bolus? Because I don't remember telling you to take a health bolus. Oh my god, he's starting to think for himself, guys. Either that or I just forgot that I told him to take it. Ogren's taking a health bolus as well. I did not tell Ogren to take a health bolus. Guys, they're evolving. They're starting to do things on their own. I'm scared. <laughs> um, okay. So. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm reading the chat. Reading the chat. Uh, 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 u
You're a bad thing to say. I don't know, but I'm going to find out. You have no reason to trust me, but let me come with you. Uh... Yeah, sure. Why not? I'll let you come with me. Great. Another twitchy magic sort. Just what we need. My name is Valana, if you care for such things. Do you know where the dark spawn might dwell? I know her voice as well. She plays someone in something. <laughs> She's an actress, magpie. Of course she plays someone in something. But you know what I mean? It's it's a very familiar sounding voice, like something like Star Trek or something like that. It's a familiar voice. Um, yeah, tunnels most likely. There is an abandoned mine some ways to the north of here. Tunnels run far into the earth. We will likely find the dark spawn there. Uh, hello, Squeaky. What's the matter, Squeaks? What's up? Just wanted to come in and say hello, did you? Okay. So we'll have Lana, we will have Anders, yes. and we shall have Ogren. Sorry, Nathaniel, I like you, but, you know, I, I, I'm the only rogue on this party. Um. <laughs> um. Sorry, I beat the chat, don't mind me. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awkward disappears. It's only minus three. I think we can come back from minus three. Uh, Vlana. Ooh, right. I'm going to make Vlana a spirit healer because it's always useful having two of them. And then I'm going to make her a battle mage. Yeah, we'll make her a battle mage. Um, oh, was I making Anders the herbalist? I can't remember. Hang on. I'm going to check. Anders... Uh, 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 skills. Yes, he's the herbalist. Okay, so Valana doesn't need herbalism. Uh, so, that means she can have other stuff. Oh, what do we want? 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 When do we want it? Yesterday. Um. Uh, ha 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 ha. Clarity, probably a good idea. And then maybe a bit of vitality. And then... I don't know, combat tactics, we'll do that. Uh, that wasn't combat tactics. That was combat tactics, wasn't it? Uh, never mind. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just talking to myself. Right, I'll give you all the spirit healer stuff so that you can revive people and whatnot, because that's useful. Even though Anders is like our main healy person. It, you know, there's nothing wrong with having two people who can revive people. You can have a death hex, because I mean, you're meant to be my Morrigan. So really, you need Morrigan-esque abilities. Oh, she's got fireball. That's useful. Maybe I don't need to give her cone of cold then, because Anders has got cone of cold. I'll give her her keeper abilities. I can't have that one. Okay. Um. Petrify is quite useful. I never used that in the main game, did I? But it is very useful. Paralyzes. We need to give up paralyze. We'll give up paralyze. I'm not looking at the chat at all here, you know. You might all be screaming at me what I should be giving her. <laughs> and I am ignoring you. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, repulsion field, because it's really good. Uh, if Anders and Valana both have their repulsion field on, do you think they repulse each other? <laughs> or do you think it's like a kind of two negatives make a positive type thing and they actually like pull them together mm. that's a thing isn't it in maths that two negatives make a positive what i was gonna say two positives make a negative but that wouldn't work i'm sure that was a thing when i was doing maths in school that it was like two negatives made a positive or something like that and i can never understand that uh give a mind blast because that's useful um <laughs> <laughs> oh, you still hear your cat, do you, Welsh friend? I see my cats when I'm out. Like, when I'm not in the house. Do you know what I mean? Like, sometimes I'll be at work and I'll catch sight of something at the corner of my eye, and I'm like, oh, that's the cat. And then I'm like, no, I'm at work. You know. If you brush past something, and you think it's the cat brushing past you. It's so weird. <laughs> um, uh, 
Oh, I don't know. What should, what should we put the last point in, guys? I think I'm gonna I'm gonna get get it heading towards petrify. There we go. Have your character stripped naked before going underground. It prevents a glitch that can cause some items to be lost. <laughs> this is just the naked playthrough. That's what's going on right now. We have to fight some people first, though, don't we? I don't think we want to fight people naked. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, right, okay. There's an emissary and an ogre. Oh, I hate it when there's an emissary and an ogre because I can never decide which one is, like, you know, the biggest threat. Let's go with the ogre because he can just, like, come up and punch us in the face. So if we get him down nice and quick, although if I can get Anders to maybe paralyse him or, or Valana, either one. Uh, just to like you know keep him out of the way a little bit and then we all attack the ogre Dora's detected a trap I, I think it's a glyph yeah um all right, all right. attack the ogre see if Dora can get herself a drama kill I know how much she enjoys them uh I, I you know what? I have no idea what any of Dora's abilities do because I never play as her I think the heart seeker one was quite good wasn't it Oh, now he's coming for me. <laughs> that was like that moment in the third Harry Potter movie, you know, where the uh, werewolf looks at them <laughs> and they're like, oh shit. <laughs> that, was, that was like that. <laughs> the ogre just turned around and looked at her. Uh, okay, the ogre's down. Uh, take out the emissary. Is Fred trustworthy? Asks Welsh friend. Uh, I mean, I ask myself that on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, oh, Anders is dying. I don't know how a healer die. That would just be embarrassing. Like, you're the one who's supposed to keep everybody alive. You know, you're meant to be the expert at keeping things alive. You can't die. Uh, right. <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> to be fair, Fred, I've never actually encountered that glitch, so it might be a console glitch. But, you know what? I trust you. If you want my people naked, I will take my people in naked. Do you mean like everything? All of their uh, jewellery and everything? I'm assuming you do, but that means I'm going to have to remember what everybody's wearing. Although I would have to anyway, because... Sorry, I was going to say I would have to anyway because they get stripped of their stuff. But then the stuff ends up on the test subjects, doesn't it? Does that mean the test subjects will be naked? Well, because that means that Ogren's line doesn't make sense anymore. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Can we not just risk it? Because I like the fact that they all wear your 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 items. I think it's cool. <sighs> okay, I'll take everything off. We'll take everything. We'll do it Fred's way. We'll go in naked. Uh, dee -dee -dee. Me inventory's full. <laughs> Fred, I can't do it. Me inventory's full. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, glitches that some of the dogs won't count with the items and they get lost because of that. Okay. Hmm. There's a cat. Hello, cat. What's up, Squeaky? What? What's the matter, Squeak Face? What's up? What's the matter? Oh, boy. You sound so anguished, don't you? You sound so anguished. What's the matter? I mean, I've just filled your food bowl up, so it can't possibly be that. 
litter trays clean, you have water. <sighs> Ogrid can wean his armour. <laughs> That's a funny typo, that. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, right, so the glitch is that some of the dogs born can't wear the items. It's not dog spawn who wear them, though, is it? It's the test subjects who are, like, elves and stuff, aren't they? Or am I misremembering that? I don't know. Um, if you have shit gear you don't mind losing, you can have them wear that. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. So, I'll tell you what. We'll put the... Just the bog standard leather armour on. Oh, she looks quite good in that. Uh, by bog standard, it's... Uh, Drake skin, <laughs> but you know, um, <sighs> you can have some heavy chain mail. She can wear the heavy chain mail boots, but she can't wear the splint mail. That's weird. Uh, and uh, oh god, she looks terrible in that. She looks awful in that. Looks really, really bad in that. Valana, uh, you can take that off. Valana should be fine though, shouldn't she? Because this is all the stuff she's. Just starts with. And I didn't lose any of the items last time, I'm sure. Ooh, that's cool. She can do a spin. <laughs> um, yeah, so she should be fine. I'm going to say she's going to be fine. Anders isn't really wearing anything that interesting, to be fair, except, yeah, he's, he's got cool rings on. Uh, Fox's pendant is quite good. We'll keep that. The rest of his stuff isn't that interesting, to be fair. Ogren! So can Ogren keep all of his stuff? I think Ogren can keep all of his stuff, right? Maybe take his rings off. Uh, I mean, inventory's full. Inventory's full. Uh, okay, that'll do us. That'll do. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Do you know what? We've dropped a save. In fact, we'll drop a proper save. Uh, called. Winding wood, there we go. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so if anything does go drastically wrong, we can just reload. We can just reload. Where's this cat? Hello, puddy. Oh, what's up, Squeaks? Oh, you nearly knocked my cup off there, love. Mm. With your little puddy tail. Oh, you've nearly done it again. Do you want do you want my cup on the ground? We can put my cup on the ground. There you go. <laughs> She's like, no, I wanted to push your cup onto the ground. I didn't want you to put your cup on the ground. <laughs> hey? What's up, Squeaky? Okay. Right. Um. Uh right, okay. So there's a scroll. Dora does not have any weapons equipped. Do I have any weapons I can give her other than her decent ones? Uh, you know what? Just just have some dog spawn axes. Why not? I don't. Do, I, do we have to fight anything before we get um, kidnapped? I can't right, remember. He has weirdly big hands, doesn't he? It always freaks me out a bit. I mean, the rest of him's freaky as well, but I just find the weirdly big hands very freaky. Oh my god, they put Dora in a dress. Oh, please. What have 
have they done to you? They haven't done anything. I'm fine, Velana. It's not me he wants. I have to get you out before something bad happens. I don't want anyone else to be hurt. <sighs> yes. All right. Let me out and I'll take you home. The Dark Spawn have your things. You can still get it all back if you're careful and clever. They're going to come back to check on you. You have to hurry. Uh, okay, yes, what's going on? You must know something. I don't know anything, but take this key. It it opens a chest in the emissary's room. Maybe you'll find some answers there. Okay. Uh, how did you get it? I, I, I found it. They're coming. You have to go. Find a way out of the mines. Please. I can't just leave you. Sarani, wait! Okay. Valana likes me for reasons. Oh, look at us in our shit clothes. Oh, man. I would rather they'd left us naked, to be honest. We would look better, wouldn't we? We would look better naked. Oh, I don't know. Right, okay. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a very quick break. Very quick. Very, very, very quick. Like, you know, 30 seconds. Maybe a bit longer than 30 seconds. I don't know. Time me. Time me. See how long I'm away for. Where's the squeezer? What do you want? Where is it? Was that a bit longer than 30 seconds? I think that was maybe a bit longer than 30 seconds, but you have to blame the cats because, you know, we just got involved in a conversation. Like you do with cats, you know. And they wouldn't let me go. They wouldn't. Uh, uh, <laughs> right, okay. Reading the chat. Security ostrich has left us. To go shopping on a Saturday. You are a braver person than I. Uh, I was going to say you're a braver ostrich than I. <laughs> yeah, you're a braver ostrich than I, security ostrich. Uh, hasn't been four hours yet, has it? No, it's been three and a half. Should we stop at the four hour mark or should we go a bit longer? I don't know. I would like to get like the whole of the winding wood finished, but I think we might be here for like five or six hours if we did that. So, I don't know. Ooh, there's dark spawns. Well. Was that Valana launching fireballs? <laughs> Ooh, I hiccuped. Um, yeah. There we go. <laughs> and the fact that Valana just launches fireballs, you know. Makes her seem angry like she should be. <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness, I can't get in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Holding cell key. Now can I get in there? Now I can get in there. I can get into the totally empty holding cells that have nothing of interest in them. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, your kitten screen's still on. Oh. Well, 
and you know that was like a nice exciting bit uh, <laughs> you know you had to try and guess what was going on you know we do that sometimes on the magpie channel it's a uh, you know it's 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 uh, it's part of the interactive experience that sometimes I completely deliberately leave the kitten screens on so that you 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 know have to try and guess what's going on completely deliberately guys mm-hmm yes absolutely not accidentally don't know what you're talking about okay better than later. <laughs> oh dear let's see how long before magpie notices says friend I would not have noticed <laughs> um, um, yeah <laughs> uh, there's a door yes this door slightly perturbed me last time I think didn't it there was something that slightly perturbed me but I can't remember what it was um, uh, I think common misconception is a nicer person than us two, says right Welsh friend. Yeah, I bet you're the type of person who like doesn't tell someone when they've got like chocolate on their face or something like that. <laughs> that kind of person, aren't you? <laughs> you see, you, know, <laughs> you see someone with like you know spinach between their teeth or whatever, and you just don't mention it. You let them walk around with spinach in their teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's the architect's journal. Some experiment notes, which I can't click on. There we go. All right, all right. Um, yeah, it was the experiment up here, wasn't it? I've never been able to figure out this experiment. Maybe if I read the experiment notes that I've just picked up from the codex entry. Oh, fuck, now I have to find the codex entry. That's uh, not going to be easy. Quest related. It's not a quest related one. Okay, interesting. Um, uh, oh, there's a lot of spell combinations that I haven't found. That's weird. Uh, architect's journal, architect's notes. I don't think that's actually helping. No, that's not helping at all. Uh, you wouldn't say if they got their skirt caught in their tights. I would. I, I think I would. I'd be like, love, you've got your skirt caught in your tights, man. Do people still wear tights? Is that a thing? <laughs> um, I haven't worn tights since I was like nine or something like that. I used to wear sparkly tights to go to uh, school discos. I remember once uh, while I was getting ready for school disco, my tooth fell out. My teeth used to fall out at like weird moments like that. Like once when I was getting ready for a school disco. And then we went to see the king and I at the Sunderland Empire for my birthday. And my tooth fell out as the curtain was going up and my mother had to um like put it in fold it into a tissue and like put it in a handbag yeah, there you go uh, <laughs> weird anecdote right yeah the experiment i don't i i can't figure out the experiment i've never been able to figure out the experiment so you do that nothing happens and you do that and blood mm -hmm. okay and if we do that again more blood Yes. And we do it again. All right, all right. More blood. But then that blood disappeared. Are we meant to get it that they've all got blood or that none of them have got blood? I don't know. I don't understand. And then what happens if we do that one? Oh, I'm very confused. I'm super duper duper confused. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> mm, leggings now says uh, Welsh friend trousers girl yourself uh, I'm like leggings or jeans that's me or shorts in the summer that's me I used to be partial to a mini skirt now and then uh, with tights actually I would wear it with tights but it's been a while I'll be honest <laughs> been a while I still own a mini skirt uh, a denim one. I haven't worn it in a while. What the hell are we doing? Does anybody know what we're doing? I don't know. I don't even know what, like, our end goal is. Like, I have not a clue. Also, these levers are, like, taller than she is. Does anybody else find that weird? I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. It gets me that chest down there, but I, I, I don't know. Is there anything worth having in that chest? 
Uh, shall I Google it, says Welsh friend? Yes, Google it, Welsh friend. Although I've messed around with it a bit, so we won't be starting from, like, the start. But yes, Google it. You Google it, and I'll, uh... Uh, I'll I'll keep filling I'll I'll keep fiddling with the levers. There we go. Who who knows? I might solve it. Might solve it. Mhm. Mm keep fiddling. Yeah. Oh my God! Stop zooming in on Dora's head. Jesus. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm when what is that even doing? I can't tell what it's doing. It's switching those two around. Is that all it does? And then that one, like... Oh, I'm so confused. So if it gets like that... I did it! I did it, guys. I did it! I think I sort of figured it out. Um. Yeah, I think, like, that... that Which one was it? That one was, like, swapping those two around. So you have to get it so that the blood is on those two... And then you try and swap them round and they cancel each other out. I think that's what you're meant to do, maybe. Possibly? I don't know. <laughs> I did it! That's what's important. You know, it's the uh, taking part that counts or something. Uh, yeah, now we can get through the door. Yay! Let's see what marvellous uh, rewards await us. Dragon Spite? That's a good name. Four damage, rapid aim, reduces hostility, ten attack, twenty versus dragons. Uh, black blade tunic. Uh, Twelve defense, twenty fire resistance, twenty cold resistance. Yeah, a ruby and twelve gold. Well, well, well. Uh, yeah, and lots of dead people, as you do. Hmm. 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 Okay, just reading the chart, don't mind me. Right, so. Uh, we should probably give Nathaniel that bow, shouldn't we? So he doesn't have to punch people. Nathaniel's not here. What are you talking about, woman? <laughs> uh, can I wear the uh, the tunic? No, I can't. Oh, Ogren can, but I don't want to give Ogren the good stuff. <laughs> You'll get... <laughs> He'll get like ogrenness on it, won't he? He'll, he'll it'll be covered in ogren if I if I give him that armor, and then Nathaniel won't want to be won't uh, won't want to wear it because like, you know, it'll have been ogrened. It'll be like we'll give it to him, and he'll be like, "This is covered in ogren. <laughs> I don't want to wear armor that's got ogren on it." <laughs> uh, oh, that's a big statue. Um, mm hmm. This is the one where you can kill them from up here, isn't it? Okay, or we could just do that. And go and we kill the dog spawn. I mean, we d we destroyed an ancient statue in the process, but you know, who cares? <laughs> um, right, so. Uh, just punch this dog spawn to death. <laughs> Look at us not needing weapons. How awesome we are just punching a Herlock Alpha to death. There we go. And we can do a level up. Uh, two cunning, one dexterity. I'm, put, I'm putting more into the cunning than the dexterity these days. Um, I should do rune crafting, shouldn't I? So we can craft runes and then... Uh, let's that get that going on. I always think it doesn't matter so much by the time you've got to awakening. Like, you know, you're pretty kind of awesome, whatever you do, to be honest. Uh, I could dress us in the, uh, you know, the armour that I'm picking up off people, but like... Why? We don't need it. We're awesome. We can That's just punch people later. to death. You know, we don't need any crappy dark sport equipment. Uh, 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 maybe we need some crappy dark sport equipment. Oh, I've got none of my grenades. Oh, man. Uh, I need you to do a fireball. Guide, my arm. guide your arm. Okay, I'll guide your arm, love. Um, and if we can all focus on the emissary. 
Put a bit of a paralyze on the emissary. I think Amber's already paralyzed it, but now it's like double paralyzed. So, you know, that's good. Um, they're going to punch the emissary to death, and Valana is going to do a blast. Try and stop this guy from stabbing her. Go. And then you can do a bit of a heal on yourself, my angel. There we go. <laughs> I'm reading the chat, don't mind me. Uh, right, and then maybe do a drain life. Excellent. And then, oh man, look how good we are. Look how cool we are, man. We're just awesome. Who needs armor? Who needs weapons and armor? You know, only losers need weapons and armor. And we're not losers. We're awesome. So, take a drink of my water. Oh my goodness, I can hear a buddy. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, it's the buddy who doesn't normally squeak. Hello, squeakage. It's funny because his sister squeaks more than him, but I think that when he squeaks, he's squeakier. Do you know what? Like his meow is squeakier. Meow again, puds. So they can hear how squeaky you are. No? You just want to go on the windowsill? Oh, you're, you're sitting on my laptop. Okay. Um... Okay. He's very squeaky, right? That's a very squeaky meow. You're slightly blocking my screen. You know what this means. <gasps> Kitten drama. Oh! The, the, the keyboard's off the, off the desk. Off the desk. And... He's gone. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, you're knocking things off. What have you knocked off? What are you doing? I think he's bored. He's just woken up and he's bored. Go play with your sister. Mm. Oh, boop. There you go. <laughs> Bloody hell. Right, okay. So, uh, you found a secret door with a two headed skeleton playing chess with itself. Um. <laughs> The two-headed skeletons are freaky, right? What the hell are they supposed to be? Look at them. <laughs> um. Yeah. Oh my goodness! What? What's up, Squeakage? You're so soft. Yes, you are. You're so soft. No. What's up, Squeaky? Eh, you're so beautiful. Mm, you're my beautiful boy. Yes. I think you're my favourite boy. I think you are. I think he's my favourite boy on all of planet Earth. Even more than Fred. Sorry, Fred. <laughs> I think you are. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing that I've got a boy and a girl, because then I can say things like, you're the most beautiful boy, and it, you know, it won't offend the other one. You know what I mean? Sometimes I find myself saying things like, oh, you're the most beautiful putty. And then I have to go, no, you're the most beautiful boy putty. Or I have to go, like, you're the joint most beautiful putty. <laughs> you know, I don't want them to think that I have a favourite. You're going to break my printer. What are you doing? Oh, my God, he's on the computer. No, no, no. You keep your paw away from that power button. If we suddenly disappear, it's because he stood on the power button. What are you doing? I have to put my... Uh... My kitten drama screen back on. What are you doing? Hey? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Hmm? Oh, oh, what are you seeing? What's happening? You know, when you're up there, you're as tall as me. Mm hmm. Are you just staying up there now? 
Mm. Wanna go down? Oh, oh, oh. Go down there. Go down there. Go on, go down there. Go on. Go on. Why is there mucky paw prints on my windowsill? Who has been on my windowsill with mucky paws? Hmm? Hmm? Where are you going? Where are you going? Okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> You can tell them both that they are favourite and they won't catch on. They will. They understand every word I say. Mm. They they understand every word I say. I I believe that wholeheartedly. <laughs> um, to be honest, I know this sounds terrible, but Scorpio is my favourite. If I could only keep one, if like I absolutely had to keep one and get rid of the other, otherwise like the world would end or something like that, I would keep Scorpio. Uh, I like Star, I do. She's my beautiful angel, but God, she's in half a drama queen. Like, she's. <laughs> she's, uh, she's more work than he is, let's just say that much. <laughs> Very clingy. Like, in many ways, he's more affectionate, but she's more clingy, if that makes sense. Um, there's an experimental subject. Oh my God, we're about to get the best line in all of the Dragon Age games. That's mine. That thing has my things. It's got its sallow, clammy hands all over my doodads, touching my junk. No one touches Argrin's junk and lives! Okay, hear how squeaky Star's being. I think she heard me. <laughs> Did you hear me? I didn't mean it, Star. I didn't mean it. Oh. <laughs> she just turned her back and walked off. <laughs> She's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, but I would never, I would never like get rid of one of them. That's like not a thing I would ever do. I would never get rid of her or anything like that. I would never do that because uh, I, especially like I wouldn't split them up because um, you know they're joined at the hip. But uh, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I do have a favourite. I know you're not meant to, but I do. Um, Right, so that's the wrong person. That's the person I want. I want a code of cold against the dragons who are here for some inexplicable reason. Um. <laughs> um. Common misconception very much on Star's side. <laughs> um, Dora is just stuck. There we go. That experimental subject down. And... Mm -hmm. yeah, look at us just punching dragons to death. We're really cool, aren't we? Definitely very cool. Okay. Get all of Ogren's stuff back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Boots of the Legion, gloves of the Legion, armor of the Legion. Uh, he had Storm Chaser, didn't he? I think, yeah. Or did I have Storm Chaser? Where's the Helm of Honleith gone? Did I have the Helm of Honleith? Oh, will that be in the chest? There'll be a chest of stuff, won't there? Yeah. Uh, and then you can have all of your hoochmorts. It's back. And a weapon. That would be useful, wouldn't it? Uh, he had that, didn't he? Uh, okay. Drop a quick save. Uh, Ogren gets his uh, armor back. So. Oh. Uh, you like how the dragonlings squeak when they get murdered, do you, Colin <laughs> It's a bit sadistic. <laughs> uh, right, okay. 
Mm -hmm. You can tell when I've run out of things to say because I just start humming. I just kind of go, mm -hmm. la di da, tum di tum. Hello, person. You were the warden commander. I would not have expected to meet you here. Did those bastards get you too? Um, not for long. I'm getting out of here. I had hoped you would avoid capture. It would be luckier than the rest of us. I was to help rebuild the Ferelden Wardens, just as you were. We were at Vigil's Keep less than a week when the Darkspawn came. I think I'm the only one left. The others are dead, or worse. Uh, what are the Darkspawn doing? I'm not sure. Emissary who leads them is more cunning than any Darkspawn I've encountered. He's fascinated with wardens. But listen, there is a Darkspawn here carrying a huge maul. He crushed my legs. He took my wedding ring. Please, Commander, slay him. Bring the ring to my wife, Nida, in Amaranthine. Tell her I died trying to make this world better. Uh... Okay, sure, whatever. I wanted to make the world a better place? What an insipid line. Is that really supposed to make her feel better about his death? I mean, chill out, Valana. There's a time and a place. <laughs> Maybe you could use your eternal voice for her. Uh, you must be so much fun at funerals. Uh, I'm not with her. <laughs> she'll know he didn't die in vain. Yeah, she'll know he didn't die in vain. I mean, he kind of did, but also he didn't. Humans. Thank you, Commander. I'll make her turn his gaze on you. Okay, Valana just proves minus one. Uh, yep. So. <laughs> that is a very large bit of crystal they tried to fit in that barrel. I feel like they were being, in, um, you know, optimistic trying to fit that bit of crystal in that barrel. I think most people would have looked at that crystal and looked at that barrel and gone, eh, not gonna work, love. But <laughs> not these miners. No, they were determined. <laughs> Uh, right. Uh, 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 do I ever do Cal Harol first? I, I read that um, sentence about five times in my head before I understand understood what you'd written. <laughs> I think it's... <laughs> uh, it's getting late. Um, um, I don't know. Maybe I can't specifically remember. What did I do first for um, Constance? Did I do Black Marsh first? Because I know I didn't do Wending Wood first because I got Valana last. I might have done Calharol first. I can't remember. I cannot remember. Uh. <laughs> maybe the miners were using lube to fit things in barrels. I mean, maybe. <laughs> uh. I found a shopping list in the shop. I always think it's funny finding other people's shopping lists. And uh, I, found, I found a shopping list. I think it had been left in a trolley or something. And whenever you find other people's shopping lists, I love to read what they've written on their shopping lists. And this shopping, it was so funny, this shopping list, because it was like bread, milk, bacon, I think was on there. Um, butter, sugar, just like really basic stuff. And then right at the bottom, sexual lubricant. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that they'd even written it like that, like most people would just write lube. Or like not write it on at all and just remember, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was just like bread, milk, bacon. Eggs, sugar, whatever. Sexual lubricant. <laughs> that was so funny. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, retail's very boring, you know. You have to find your entertainment wherever you can. Um, right. <laughs> right, so. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I can hear a cat squeaking. Take our one Lyrian potion that we've got, Anders, because I need you to have magic. 
<laughs> there was a YouTuber that lived for a week on shopping lists left in the bottom of shopping trolleys. Wow. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Tell you what else is quite funny sometimes because we have um, Uber orders, so you can like order stuff from the shop on Uber and just eat as well. Um, and they're annoying as fuck because <laughs> they slow down the rest of our work. But sometimes people order quite funny things. You get quite funny orders um, on like Ubers because you know it's like it's like, it's like you know it's express delivery. You kind of order a few things and you get it delivered to your door by Uber driver. I'm sure this is not a, a new concept to you. Um, but you sometimes get quite funny things. So my two favourite ones was I had one that was a box of condoms and a Madeira cake. <laughs> it's like, you know, someone's planning a fun evening, a box of condoms and a Madeira cake. And then the other one that was, I just howled when I saw it. It was um, three bottles of vodka and a pregnancy test. <laughs> I was like, all right, <laughs> three bottles of vodka and a pregnancy. Somebody was sitting at home and thought, you know what? I really need to order on Uber. Three bottles of vodka and a pregnancy test. <laughs> um, right. Uh, I also had once had an order that was like almost entirely gin and baby food. That was, <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, that was an interesting one. Um, right. So, uh, <laughs> uh, right, so, it's a good day to die, shouts for Lana. She's part Klingon, you know. Um, <laughs> um, uh, oh, that was Valana's clothes. I didn't even notice that we were uh, fighting someone in Valana's clothes. Skins of the Keeper. That, uh, that sounds really creepy, doesn't it? That sounds like they've skinned a Keeper, right? <laughs> um, Heart of the Forest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can order Morrison's on Amazon. I did not know that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we're not a fan of expresses. Actually, my, <laughs> my manager the other day, because like the trouble is, you never know how many there's going to be. That's the thing. It's unpredictable. So, you know. But my manager the other day, because <laughs> he was picking them, he was picking the expresses. Because we call them expresses. Because you can also, now you can do this stupid thing where you can order, like, an actual delivery for, like, an hour later. But it's, like, £8.50 extra delivery. But it's amazing how many people do it. But it's stupid. Um, you think if you just organise yourself a bit better, you could order it, like, the night before. And it's, like, a, a quid delivery or something. But no, let's pay £8.50 delivery to get it delivered the next hour. But anyway, he was uh, he was doing expresses and he... he <laughs> I happened to walk past him in the aisle and he looked at me and he just went, whoever came up with express orders just needs to go to hell. I was like, all right. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> yeah, we don't like them. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, although I will, I will admit that I have done the odd Uber order if I've been ill. I, yeah, if I've been ill and I don't want to leave the house and there's the bits I need, I've done the odd Uber order. So as much as I complain about them, I have used it myself. So, you know, I suppose I can't really say much. Uh, what's a Madeira cake, says Fred. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, I was reading the rest of the chat. Um, do you not have Madeira cake? It's a sort of cake. <laughs> I don't know. How do you describe Madeira cake? It's sort of like a Victoria sponge, but denser. And it's got a it's got a sort of skin on it, hasn't it? It's not icing, but it's like a kind of I don't know how to describe it. It's, yeah, it's like a kind of skin, which sounds horrible, but I love that bit of a Madeira cake. I don't know. It's a Madeira. I don't know how to describe a Madeira cake. It's it's um. All right, all right. It's a Madeira cake. Uh. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, Fred. It's a Madeira. It's a Madeira cake. It's like it's like a vanilla kind of cake, but it's very dense. But it's just like, 
It is vanilla, I think. But it's like it's it's I I I it's a it's <laughs> I don't know it's a material. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> Google it. Um, yeah. Do I have Madeira cakes across the pond? Really? Um, I have a joke about Madeira cakes, but it might not it might not um, translate very well. It might not translate very well, one, because you apparently don't have Madeira cakes, but also because it might be a dialect thing. It might not translate very well. So I don't know whether to tell my Madeira cake joke or not. I don't know. Uh, we head through here. Is this where we've already been? Yes, it is. I thought it looked familiar. Um, right, so... Yes, we'll just follow the... Uh, oh, he's got a pickaxe out of it, uh, sticking out of his chest. How delightful. Uh, uh, Common misconception, I remember these sort of rectangular little cakes with some strawberry lemon frosting on top. Um, no. Um, well, the thing is, you can get a lemon Madeira cake, can't you? And then you can get an iced Madeira cake, which usually it has like, it's like three layers and it has buttercream and then jam and then icing on the top. So that's an iced Madeira cake. You can get lemon Madeira cake, but just like Madeira cake, it's just Madeira cake. Like it doesn't have any filling. It's not... It's just I, I don't I do not know how to describe Madeira cake. It's just like a plain cake, really. But it's very dense. That's the best way I can describe it. Um, uh, it's, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's Anders over there. Well, that's Anders's outfit. And I think I should be around here somewhere as well. I've been paralysed. That's not nice. Mm. Uh, now we're debating Madeira cake. Okay. Uh, Welsh friend will answer all your questions about Madeira cake because she's the queen of Google. Um, <laughs> uh, there we go. Pound cake, perhaps, says Fred. I do not know because I don't know what pound cake is. So maybe. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's not like sponge. Because sponge is like light. It's it's very dense. Um, 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 I don't know what I'm making Anders do. What am I making Anders do? I don't know. Um, uh, right. Of course, when I'm thinking of Madeira cake, I'm thinking of like the shop bought one. I've never like made a Madeira cake or anything. So maybe um, somebody is launching chain lightning at us. Maybe like, you know, actual proper Madeira cake is different to shop bought Madeira cake because I've only ever had shop bought Madeira cake. We should definitely be taking out the experimental subject because that's the one who is launching magic at us. Which makes sense considering he's wearing Anders's stuff. It did not occur to me. Um. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the cake you usually have with tea? To be fair, that could be any cake. <laughs> I would have any cake with tea. Um, yeah, I think maybe Madeira cake is something you often have with tea, possibly. Uh, um, we took out almost all those gen locks with one fireball. Go us. Also, there's one down here, apparently. Uh, it was designed to be eaten with sherry or Madeira wine. Well, I would never drink wine with cake. Mind you, I would never drink wine because I hate wine, but like, you know, I would never think to pair cake and wine together. Mm -hmm. There's a cake, and I can't remember what it was called. It's not something that we eat now, but the French invented it to make fun of 
um, English cakes because our cakes tend to be very, very dense, whereas French cakes are very kind of light and airy. And uh, they invented this cake to like make fun of our cakes. And this was like way, way, way back, like in the 1700s or something, maybe even longer ago than that. Um, <clears throat> They invented this cake, like, to poke fun at us. It was, like, a joke at our expense. And uh, it ended up becoming, like, the most popular cake amongst the British aristocracy. <laughs> and because, like, they needed ice houses to build it because there was something that needed to be frozen. It's one of the ingredients. And uh, they, they'd never really had ice houses before and they built ice houses specifically so that they could make this cake. And they, like, hired chefs specifically to make that cake like their only job in the household was to make that cake i can't remember what it's called but it it, it was just like it was it's just that it was i don't know it was just kind of funny that the uh the uh um is that the stuff i was wearing or the stuff anders was wearing did we take all of anders's stuff off I think we did, didn't we? Um, yeah, that like uh, they've made this cake like to make fun of work, and we were just like, actually, this is the best cake we've ever had. <laughs> um, and we still don't have Dora's stuff back because her stuff was in a chest. Is it a chest that's nearby? Maybe it is. Uh, Right, okay, so... I like a dense cake. I think cake should be dense, don't you? I don't think cake should be all light and airy. I just think, like, you always get stuff from, like, French, French patisseries. And it's like, it's too sweet and it's too light. I don't know. <laughs> Gotta be Dean Wheat, man. Uh, I need to find my stuff. I'm not putting on shitty armour. I'm not doing it. I refuse. I want my clothes. Where's my clothes? This way we've already been. This is where we've already been. I'm a bugger for that, aren't I? Going back the way I've came. Come, came, come, whatever. Um, <laughs> um, that's the wrong thing. Mm -hmm, that's what I want. Oh, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I've got multiple ways to go and I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. Darkspawn Necromancer there. I'm gonna have to put Dora in some thing, aren't I? Uh, dee 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 dee. Have some Drake skin and some more Drake skin and some leather boots. And oh uh, yeah, have some dark spawn waxes. Why not? And then you can put your stuff on. Boop. Okay. Mm hmm. Uh, Starbucks always sends a pound, sell, sells a pound cake, doesn't it? Well, I never go to Starbucks. It's too fucking expensive. Uh, if, you, if you're going to go to a coffee shop, you go to Costa. <laughs> uh, although I don't like coffee, so I don't ever get coffee from a coffee shop. Well, I don't like... I mean, I can drink coffee if so long as the coffee itself isn't too strong. But in, with the coffee that you get from coffee shops is always, like, way too strong. So when I go to a coffee shop, I either get hot chocolate if it's, like, autumn, winter. Or if it's, like, spring, summer, I'll get, like, a smoothie or something. Um, but, yeah, I never get coffee in coffee shops. But, yeah, Starbucks is, like, stupid expensive. Um... <laughs> Is he going to run away from us? Oh, he is as well. Fine, fine. I'll just fight the animated dead instead. Why not? <laughs> We've been going four hours and ten minutes. I didn't even realise we'd gone past the four hour mark. <laughs> oh dear. We've all been paralysed. Mm -hmm. Ogren's been uh, cursed of mortality. Oh, good stead. That's no good at all. Should it, uh, t t t t t t t t I'm forgetting how to talk. I think we have been going too long. Are we nearly at the end of this bit? We have to get to the room where they, with the, um, oh god. With the, um, 
The dragons. Should we get to the room with the dragons and then maybe call it a day there? Because we're like we're pretty much finished at that point, aren't we? <laughs> Andes always sounds right Yorkshire when he says that, doesn't he? Destructive forces of nature coming right up. <laughs> sounds right Yorkshire. Um, oh, fucking hell. More people? Really? Really? <laughs> oh, there's a dragon. Well, a drake, which is kind of a dragon. <clears throat> and this is dying. Oh, there's a cat. There's a cat. What's up, Squiggy? What's up? Like you're ignoring us again. And this is dead. Oh dear. Oh dear. I turned away from my screen to talk to you, Puddy, and Anne has died. Honestly. Honestly. Should we see if we can paralyze this dragon? Oh, it resisted me. Paralyzed. Well, 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 well. Not many things can do that, Mr. Dragon. Oh, Valana's going to die as well. There we go. Uh... <laughs> right, so... You know what I need to do? I need to do a cleansing aura to cleanse people of their injuries because Anders and Orkman have both died and now they are cleansed of their injuries. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, right, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Where am I going? I hate it when there's two ways to go because then you're like, oh, have I missed something? At what point do I turn around and go back? I like it when levels are linear. <laughs> I don't like having to make decisions. <laughs> that looks like the way to go, right? Architect's room, yes, so we'll go back the other way. <laughs> Just humming to myself again. <laughs> No. <laughs> Start singing if you want. <laughs> you probably don't want that, do you? Uh, <laughs> uh, the cats don't like it when I sing. They look at me like I'm mental. Uh, oh god! Even even down the two ways to go, we've got more ways to go. Jesus, there's a very deposit. We could sit down to discuss magic. What would that accomplish? What? Great civilizations are built on the sharing of ideas. Sharing? You mean stealing, of course. Followed by crushing those you stole from. You know that chip on your shoulder? I think it's replaced your head. That is fucking rich coming from Anders. Jesus Christ. <laughs> She's just the elven version of you, love. Like how you are about the, the, the mages, she is about the elves. The difference is, she grows as a person as the game goes on and sort of, you know, learns and, and becomes more accepting. You? No. <laughs> um, yeah. Right, so. <laughs> um, yeah, we have gone down to two viewers. Not everybody has the sticking power of uh, Fred and Welsh friend. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> and possibly soulmate. Is soulmate is still around? I think soulmate might still be around. Uh, de -de -de. Um, let's death hex the uh, the dragon tamer as you do. Uh, I think that's a sentence I've ever said before. Let's death hex the dragon tamer. I don't know. Uh, right. Oh, common misconception still here. Oh my god, common misconception. I completely forgot about you. <laughs> I'm so sorry! <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, common misconceptions here. I'm sorry, common misconception. <laughs> um, uh, put a vulnerability hex on him. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. 
Okay. Keenan's wedding ring. And dragons. Oh, dragons, man. If you insist. Mm -hmm. I'm quite hungry. Just occurred to me. Isn't it awful when you're hungry late? Because, I mean, I know it's only like quarter to six, but to me, that's late. <laughs> it's weird when you get into a weird sleep pattern. You start to forget what, like, actual late is. And you start thinking that, like, four o'clock in the afternoon is really late. And then somebody will ring you at four o'clock in the afternoon. And you kind of go, why are you ringing me so late? And then you think, oh, yeah, it's not actually late. I'm just on a weird time. Uh, I don't like it when you get hungry late. You have to eat before you go to bed. Or go to bed hungry. If you go to bed hungry, then you won't get to sleep. Um, what am I giving Anders magic? And then we'll power. I've got some potato waffles in the freezer. I'll, I'll toast some potato waffles. I love a potato waffle. I try to avoid processed food as a rule. Um, apart from chocolate. Does chocolate count as a processed food? Because in that case, I definitely don't avoid processed food. <laughs> but yeah, I, I try to avoid processed food, like, as a rule. Um, but I really like potato waffles. <sighs> I really like them. Um... Who am I leveling up? Anders, yes. Uh, dee -dee -dee -dee. What should we give him? What should we give him? What should we give him? We'll give him telekinetic weapons so that we can he can get a uh, crushing person next time. Chocolate is processed food, is it? Yeah, I thought it probably was. We won't count that, though. We won't count chocolate, will we? That doesn't need to count. Nah. Nah. No, love. Why would we count chocolate? Uh, right, so. Mm -hmm. Apart from chocolate and potato waffles, I try to avoid processed food. Actually, there's probably a lot of stuff that's processed that I don't even realise is processed, to be fair. It's just so much part of our. Uh... Oh my goodness, what? Look, I'll be with you soon, Squeaky. I promise. I know. We might stop just before the dragon battle, actually, because I think the dragon battle take a while, can't it? And I think my cats are getting restless. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Read in the chat, don't mind me. Mm. Yeah, my cats are getting restless. I'm hungry. <sighs> I'll not be at my best. <laughs> Am I ever at my best? I don't know. I don't know what my best is. <laughs> I think I've ever reached my best. <laughs> it was one of those things, you know, those things that pop up uh, on the interwebs. Where it's, uh, it's sort of like... You know, like on Reddit or something like that, where they've asked people something and you've got all the people who've answered you know what I mean but then some lazy journalist decides to put it in an article because apparently that's what journalism is these days <laughs> it always makes me laugh when you have when, it, when you, you know you click on an article and it's literally just a copy and paste of a reddit post followed by all the comments on the reddit post and it's like really <laughs> this is your job you copy and paste stuff from reddit <laughs> <laughs> or it'll be like, you know, so, some some random person has done a TikTok video and they'll just like link the TikTok video and then write a few paragraphs about the TikTok video and then copy and paste all of the comments from the TikTok video. That's apparently what counts as journalism these days. But anyway, um, it was like one of those kind of articles and it was like, it was something like, at what point in your life do you think you peaked? And I remember being like, I really hope that I have not peaked. I don't think I've peaked. I <laughs> I, I, best is yet to come, but hopefully. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's the uh, the chest that we had a key for. And pile of books. Oh, oh, the game's getting a bit stuttery. I think yeah, it might be planning on crashing soon. Planning on crashing game. Where's all of our stuff? Do we get our stuff back after the dragon battle? I'm very confused. Because uh, it's the dragon battle through here. The dragon battle's through there, right? Have we got our stuff back? And I've not, not noticed. We do not have our stuff back. Where's our stuff? It, oh, is it in a chest, like, just before you leave? I think it might be. Uh... 
Uh, sorry, I'm reading the chat. Okay, yeah. Because I know the dragon battle's just through there and I'm half tempted to just do the dragon battle, but then I'm like, dragon battle's quite hard if I recall. Uh, I think it took me a couple of goes with Constance and Constance was quite a strong character. So I think we start off with a dragon battle next time. That sounds like a good, you know, way to start an episode, doesn't it, with a dragon battle? That sounds pretty awesome. Okay. We need an album cover. Where are we going to do an album? I mean, we could do it in front of that door, but that's a bit boring. Uh, there's a chest with all your stuff in just before the battle. Is there? Is there? I'm going to drop a save there, because... Oh, that's the... Uh... Oh! Oh, I thought this room was after the dragon battle. Oh. Because my inventory is going to be full, in it? But we can sell all my stuff to this convenient Canary merchant. You are not supposed to be here. Uh, yes, neither are you. You are wrong. Mm -hmm. I bring them supplies. Mm -hmm. They give me gold. Okay, I'll trade with you very quickly. Joop, sell all the stuff we don't need. Oh, we can sell Sir Pound's lot. Let's not do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, sell all the crap we don't need. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep the ruby because I think you might need a ruby later on, but I can't quite remember. Oh, we've got a shiny malachite we can give someone. Uh, that's probably a sig for a minute. Uh, we'll get rid of our peasant clothes. Hmm. Get rid of some of this crap. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, and then I'll be able to get me stuff back so that Dora can be in our proper armour for the album cover. That's what we shall do. Right, do you think I've sold enough stuff yet? <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna I'm just quickly selling the stuff that I know I absolutely don't need. Uh, and we'll do it like properly. Next I won't need that, will we? Uh yeah, we'll, we'll do like a proper clean out once we get back to Vigil's Keep. Rid of all this shit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That'll be enough by now, won't it? Uh, and whoop. Okay, I didn't actually look to see whether he had anything uh, worth, uh, worth uh, uh, mm -hmm. yes, buying, wearing, I was going to say. Uh, Dress of the Provocator! I think I can hear fireworks going off. <laughs> There's still, even now, been a few days where fireworks have gone off. Where's my gloves? What gloves did I have on? Because there are no gloves there. Like, what gloves did I have on? I don't know, but I've got Drake skin gloves on now, so I suppose that's going to have to do, isn't it? Uh, bloodline... And dead tig shanka. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think we already got our stuff back. But and as you can have, you had tingler, didn't you? And I think ring of mastery. Yes, and you have that, and you have that. Um, you have a first enchanter cowl if you like. I'm afraid it's going to cover up your sexy hair and make you look stupid. But you know, it, it's quite good. <laughs> Uh sorry I'm reading the chat. I can hear a cat behind me. I'm I won't be long, sweets. Just calm down, man. Uh yes, we can recruit the guy, can't we? You're right, Fred. Yeah, will you trade supplies at a discount? Uh, I need to know what's going on. Uh, or do you know what's going on? Do you know what's going on? No. Questioning okay. them would be inadvisable. Why would the canary work for the dog spawn? Coon is a lie. I am Tal Bashaw, outcast. My life is my own. I do not help the dark spawn. I help myself. 
Okay. Uh, I like how much about the Canari that they had planned out, even in Origins, when the Canari don't really feature that much. But you only realise that once you've played, like, Dragon Age 2, where the Canari feature a lot more, and then you go back and play Origins, and there's a few little, you know, lines here and there, where you're like, oh, they actually had the Canari really well planned. Uh, what if Dark Spawn Corruption affects you? It will not. I have been promised protection. Uh, why would they promise that? I provide a service. Hmm. I can ask him to trade supplies at a discount. Very well. What if you truly wish my help? Okay. Do you recruit him later? You might recruit him later. Like, after the battle, possibly. Because uh, you sort of, like, killed his customers. I think that's a thing. I'm going to buy all of his grenades. Because he's got grenades. <laughs> and I'm finally willing to accept that grenades are actually quite good. <laughs> Uh, right, okay, so that'll do. Right, album cover. Should we do it in the architect's room? Or should we do it in here? This is quite sexy, isn't it? Oh yeah, with the torches. I quite like that, actually. Oh yeah, that's kind of cool. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, Ogryn is standing like, you know, you're invading me personal space a bit there, Ogryn. Just going to say, definitely invaded me personal space. Okay, how should we arrange everybody then? Again. How should... <laughs> Ogre just went again, like he's going another album cover, really? <laughs> or, oh, we could have... I don't know what we could do. I don't, I, I, I don't know if it's going to work. Okay, we put, put Ogre in here. Boop. No, I need you like it more in the middle. More in the middle. More in the middle, like there. There you go. And then put Vlana. Like there. There. And then put Anders. This is good. This is good. This is going to look artistic and poetic if it works. It's going to be the camera angles that are going to screw us up. And then Dora stands like in front of them all. Oh, yes. Is that okay? Although then you can't see them as well. Can we close that door? Close that door. There you go. Right. I mean, it annoys me that that arch behind there isn't lined up with that arch, but, you know, I think it still looks cool. Now, maybe if we zoom in. There we go. We need to be able to see Valana in the background. Okay. Now we just have to wait for everybody to look forward. <laughs> That's a cool album cover, though, right? Because with them all stood in, like, their own individual bits. I like that. I think that's cool. Um... Uh, uh, just reading the chat, make sure people approve. Yeah, people approve. People are approving. It's a good album cover, isn't it? It's good. I like it. Yeah. Valana is slightly camouflaging in with the background, so you can't quite see her. But I think it's I think it's good. I think it's cool. I think that's it. I think that's the album cover. I think we're sorted. Right, so I shall see you on Tuesday at 1.30 GMT. When we shall continue uh, awakening, we'll do that dragon fight, and then I don't know what we're going to do. We might do a like a side quest type thing because we've still got those those letters that um, Thunderbirds lady gave us, as I'm going to call her. Um, we need to go and do those too. There's probably some stuff in the city that we need to do. Uh, yeah. Um, so I don't know if we'll do another of the main quests. We might just have a side quest type one. Uh, I don't know which one we're going to do next, actually. We might do Calharol next. And then do, um... <sighs> yes, the Black Marsh. Because whichever companion you recruit last, you sort of don't really... One thing, there's a glitch, which means they sometimes don't get to become a Grey Warden. But also, like... Uh, although Justice already is a Grey Warden, isn't he? I don't know whether he has to actually do the... I don't think he has to do the, um... The Hooja. Anyway, um... Yes, uh, yes, whoever you recruit last is sort of the one who you kind of, like, you know... You don't really get to build much of a rapport with them, and to be honest, I think Justice is the least interesting, personally. Um, so yeah. Uh, anyway, um... Fred won't be here Tuesday, so we're gonna have to... We're gonna have to make it alone. We're gonna have to... Do it on our own, guys. <sighs> oh, 
Oh my god, Welsh friend might not be able to make it at the beginning. Jesus Christ, oh my goodness, who's going to be here? Who's going to be here? <laughs> I clutched my pearls there. I'm not wearing any, but I still clutched them. <laughs> I might just be talking to myself for four hours. That's all right. I'm sure we'll muddle through. Anyway, I shall see you on Tuesday. But until then, I shall, uh, yeah, I shall say farewell.